made easy. That's totally Target. Well, it was supposed to be a relatively quiet night in Columbia, but things turned a couple of days ago when both South Carolina and South Carolina State got together, decided because of the hurricane to move this one to a Thursday night. So here we are at williams Bryce Stadium, South Carolina 2-2, two two. South Carolina State at 1-2. Just 45 miles separate these two institutions, beating for just the third time on the gridiron, and we are glad you could join us on a cool, blustery night here in Columbia. Dave Neal alongside former University of Georgia quarterback Aaron Murray. Glad you could join us. And uh, Aaron, obviously this has been a quick turnaround for these two clubs, just 48 hours notice to, to know they're going to play tonight. From a player's perspective, how do you handle all that? Get up and play football. You're young. These are 18 okay. to 22 year old kids. <laughs> young men. I'll say young men. Yeah. They should feel fine. There's a little bumps and bruises, but it's early enough in the season. Both teams are fairly healthy right now heading into this game. And this is your opportunity. National stage. Not a lot of games tonight. People want to watch football. Let's go out there and have some fun. Well, they had some fun last week here at williams Bryce. certainly as Charlotte came in here and South Carolina found a running game. Marshawn Lloyd, who had been banged up a couple of years ago with a bad knee injury, looked like the guy people expected a few seasons ago. Uh, just absolutely explosive. Anytime you can hurdle a safety like that, you know the juices are back for him. And this is what the offense needs. They need to find a way to talk to the coaching staff to get to about a 60-40 run to pass. And I know we're in a league right now and across the country you see guys throwing the ball left and right but the best teams still find a way to dominate up front it's good to see him healthy and running like that yeah almost 300 yards on the ground rushing last week 169 from Marshawn Lloyd we'll see if he can keep that going now the question becomes if they run the ball this well what does that mean for their quarterback Spencer Rattler well get him on the run I, I love when Spencer gets out of the pocket through play action passes and then also within the the run pass option those RPO games if you want to put an extra defender in the box to slow down the run you got numbers on the outside for nice easy completions and they're doing a great job as well these receivers blocking for their fellow receivers on those bubbles well he completed over 70 percent of his passes last week against charlotte that's a good sign for gamecock fans we'll see if spencer can continue that path maybe take a few more shots down the field today if the run game gets cranked up as well south carolina state coming in here they've never won against an fbs opponent but don't tell buddy pew that he is fired up ready to go we talked to him yesterday he couldn't wait to get here to williams bryce stadium and play some football we'll see how his club handles this environment. Well, Alyssa Lang is down on the sidelines, and Alyssa, for all of us, really just a couple of days to get ready for this one, presenting a different dynamic, not just for us, but for obviously for these two teams. Yeah, guys, a really weird week for both of these programs, but two programs who have really good relationships with each other and have for decades. So, of course, South Carolina State said no problem. We'll come 45 minutes up the road to Columbia to get this game played. Now, when it comes to the structure of practice this week for Shane Beamer, who's no stranger to Thursday night games himself. He reached out to the Miami Dolphins to see how they were structuring their week. The Dolphins right now up in Cincinnati getting ready for Thursday night football to take on the Bengals. The main difference between Spencer Rattler and Tua Tungabailoa is the fact that Tua doesn't have class and Spencer did, but they feel really good about the preparation that they have for this game. They do believe that they're going to face some similar challenges that the Charlotte 49ers gave them right here on this field just about a week ago. The weather could prevent, present some challenges as well. A lot of Gamecock fans out there really looking forward to seeing Spencer Rattler maybe gain some confidence, airing it out a little bit tonight. But the wind is gusty. It's coming and going. So we'll see how much either of these teams can go through the air, guys. All right, Alyssa, we'll also keep an eye on the kicking game as South Carolina State will kick it off to South Carolina as the Gamecocks won the toss and they want the football and they'll take it out over the 25 to the 28 yard line and we mentioned Spencer Rattler the redshirt junior of course the Oklahoma transfer and on the year completing 62 percent of his passes um, had a great game last week in terms of completion percentage at 74 percent 17 out of 23 we'll see how what they really want to do with him. It'll be interesting yep. to see six conference games in a row coming up after this one. So how will they use him tonight? They'll swing it to the outside on the first play of the game. Xavier Leggett with the catch, and he'll get it out over the 30. They'll spot him at the 34-yard line. That's a lot of what we saw 
last weekend right here at williams bryce well it's spencer he's a great athlete and, and he does a tremendous job with his lower half being able to throw these bubble screens on the outside and it's a number game and, and if a defense, once again, wants to load the box and put six, seven defenders in there, and you got numbers, it's easy. Pitch and catch, is, it's, it essentially is an extension of the run. Couple of tight ends in the game. Rattler, straight drop, going up top. Trying to find Leggett, who will stumble, and that one is picked off. What an interception by South Carolina State. It hit a couple of Bulldogs and stayed in the air long enough for the interception from Dwayne Nichols. And that's an unfortunate event right there for Rattler. Beautifully thrown football, leads his receiver across the field, and we're going to make sure that it is a confirmed interception. Uh, knows the ball might have tipped the ground there a little bit, but it's funny talking with the, the USC coaching staff this weekend. I think they're going to take an extra look. Video review, timeout. They said if they're going to intercept the ball, make them earn it. Well, I think that is one that you consider if this is this does stand up as earning an interception, but I know it's a little bit windy, and I wonder if that kind of affected the receiver and his judgment of going there to catch the post route, but you get your hand on it early in this game for an explosive play. Again, you know, you go back to the process of the catch. Did he have enough possession? A part of that ball can hit the ground as yep. long as it doesn't help you make the catch. So does he have con complete control of that football as he falls to the turf? Hard to see with that angle. My first impression is that's probably an interception. Yep. Maybe we can see it here a little bit clearer. Yeah, it looks like he has it, and then the tip of the ball, we'll see if the ball moves much at all. I, I, I remember the ball was called, or the play was called an interception on the field. I don't see a lot of evidence to overturn that. Great play. Defensively, just to keep the ball alive and then sell out to make the interception. And not the start Spencer's wanted. You alluded to the great start that he had last week or just the great game in general he had. It seemed like he was building some confidence throughout the chemistry with his receivers. His feet and eyes were in the right spot. And once again, not really his fault. Thought, thought he threw a great football. Receivers got to go make that play. Boy, there's one thing I have noticed with Spencer Rattler is he has got some kind of arm. He yep. can really sling it. No, I was talking to some people that, that were at the, the Manning Academy, which a lot of obviously top tier receiver or coach or runner, quarterbacks and receivers attend every summer, and they were raving about the arm strength, how he's able to push the ball vertically down the field, and you turn on the tape and it just jumps off. And there's no doubt that they're, they're, they're still confident, even with the windy weather right now, that he's going to be able to throw the ball vertically down the field. So interesting that they go to Leggett twice out of the gate. After video review, the ruling on the field stands to be first down South Carolina State. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. I think that, that it's one of those that probably not enough to overturn it. So a turnover will give South Carolina State the football way back at the 21 yard line. Wayne Nichols with his first interception of the season. The graduate at a Lakeview High School here in South Carolina gives his team the football. So our first chance to see Corey Fields, graduate quarterback out of Hollywood, South Carolina. Good. Toss underneath to Alex James, who will take it out to the 26-yard line. So a gain of five on first down. Well, South Carolina wants to come off to a fast start defensively. Two long possessions last week really hurt them. 90-yard 90, 90 play drive, 81-yard drive. Just weren't able to capitalize on opportunities to make interceptions or get after the quarterback and finish some sacks. So there's an urgency. Get out there and let's get some more three and out, especially in the first quarter. And last week, Charlotte got off to a great start. They had 171 yards in their first 25 plays, which covered two possessions. There's the handoff. That one goes to Flowers again. Kendall Flowers is their lead tailback. The redshirt sophomore, six foot, 220 pounder from right here in Columbia, went to Irmo High School. Gain of seven. Oh, and they're excited to get him back. Had a tremendous game versus Bethune Cookman. A couple weeks ago, 153 yards on the ground. He was not in action this past weekend, and you saw the major dip in production for this offense. Only 12 yards rushing. Fields looking to throw. Pocket collapses. 
That's it around to the 30. He'll lose a couple of yards. Shane Beaver's kind of changed things up a little bit today, the last couple of days, to try to just, I don't know, invigorate this team to get out to a quicker start on both sides of the football. And we're going to see a little bit of a quarterback change for South Carolina State, bringing in Tyrese Nick, more of the athlete. They want to be able to to get back to the running game. They Both teams want to be able to run the football, get to third in manageable situations. They feel like Nick is that guy, former quarterback, a tremendous athlete. He'll keep it. He'll get it out to the 33 and a half yard line. He'll bring up a third down. Well, this is where you see the quarterback carousel going back and forth between Corey Fields and Tyrese Nick. And these are the opportunities we saw from South Carolina last week. You get to third down situations and they were not able to get off the field, whether penalties, missed opportunities to sack the quarterback in the backfield. I anticipate with the size difference in speed, we're gonna see some pressure packages here on third down. They got six up in the line of scrimmage right now. It looks like they're gonna bring some heat. They'll actually drop two, rush four. That one might have been deflected at the line of scrimmage. I believe it was, and it falls harmlessly to the turf. And that'll bring up a fourth down situation. Donka Hemingway getting in there. Got his hand up in the air for the deflection. All right, honestly, Corey Fields should be pretty happy. He's seeing double A pressure, feeling, feeling that there's a chance for that. They should drop back in the single high. And DQ Smith was waiting for his second possibly pick in two weeks there. Josh Van back to return this punt. Dyson Roberts last week averaged 51 yards per punt on the year. He's averaging 43. It's a low line drive that will hit at the 35 and take a South Carolina State roll all the way down to the 25 yard line. So each team with a possession, nothing to show for it. A 41 yard punt, 11 32 to go in the opening quarter on a Thursday night in Columbia. moments made easy. That's totally Target. Picturesque, gorgeous evening here in Columbia, but you know about 5 a.m. in the morning things are going to change quite dramatically here in this Columbia area. Scoreless here in the first quarter as this game's been moved to a Thursday night. South Carolina busting out a new look tonight. That's a an ode to the 1968 South Carolina Gamecock football team. I, I've been around a long time covering a lot of games. That's the first time I've seen that look from South Carolina. That's pretty sweet. I like it. Yeah. Now we just need some more touchdowns from uh, from wearing these these new helmets right. <laughs> and catch some more footballs down the field. Can't wear the same uniform twice anymore, apparently, in today's world. Well, after the interception, South Carolina's defense forces the punt. They'll hand it off there to Marshawn Lloyd. And, boy, he is running with an attitude out over the 40-yard line. Give him 15 and a first down. Well, that's a great job by Stogner coming from right to left, leading his running back to get the first down. And I, we saw in the highlights the energy that he is running with right now. He's a man on a mission. Averaging almost six yards a carry this season. They'll give it to him again. Trying to come near side. Nowhere to run that time. Well played by the Bulldogs. Jalen Barr comes up from his safety spot to make the play. Uh, Coach Saxon, defensive coordinator for, for South Carolina State. Main mission heading into this game, stop the run. Gave up 284 yards rushing last week. So you're going to see a lot of what it's called heavy boxes, inserting safeties in there, staying in a base defense, not bringing out a nickel. As you see right here, Chris Simmons, number 24, is staying in there, more of a, a linebacker body, trying to prevent South Carolina from running the football. Second down and eight. They'll throw it. 
to the wide side of the field. Pass is caught there by Josh Van, who has been relatively quiet here to start the 2022 campaign. That's just his third catch of the year. As you look at Jonathan Saxon, defensive coordinator for South Carolina State. Well played by the Bulldogs again. Not much room to run there for Marshawn Lloyd. You know, we talk about uh, the players getting ready. Boy, the coordinators have really been stressed the last 48 hours for both these teams. Well, a lot of times what you do with a short week is you, you take everything you did not use from the week before. Okay, what, what did we not use? What have we practiced and the guys feel comfortable with? Let's put it in the game plan this week and then obviously add some wrinkles in there as you build the, 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 the plan. and. Obviously, fans are not happy with these first two drives. Interception on the first one off the bobbled pass. And they're not able to dominate up front to be able to get the first down there. But yeah, overtime, man. A lot of sleepless nights these weeks for these coaches. Bring the mat inside the office. Here's Kai Kroger to punt it away. Kai averaging 42 yards on 15 punts this year. Fair catch is made around the 15-yard line, and that's where the Bulldogs will have it when we come back. 9.17 to go. Buddy Pugh and company running their offense back on the field. All moments made easy. That's totally Target. Sun is setting here in Columbia. Winds are certainly uh, picking up as the evening progresses, but scoreless here. South Carolina State and South Carolina, just the third meeting ever between these two schools. And obviously, quick turnaround. We talked a little bit about coordinators and the impact on those guys, but I, I was interested like, from a quarterback, because I know how much is put on your shoulders every week as a quarterback. How does it change that dynamic? Well, you obviously try to get as much as you can, but sometimes the best thing that you could do in a situation like this is just go out there and play. Like, get, get, the, get the base game plan. You know where the reads are for certain coverages. This is your opportunity just to be an athlete, just to react, not to overthink it and overcomplicate it and feel like you have to stay up all night on Tuesday and Wednesday. Just go out there, run through your progressions, and have some fun. South Carolina State trying to have fun with the football. They'll hand it off to Flowers, and he'll try to get out near the 20-yard line. That'll be a gain of four. Alyssa. One of the more positive sides of this quick turnaround is looking ahead to next week. I know Shane Beamer doesn't want his players to do that, but his grad assistants are as they've been pulling packages for Kentucky. This team will head to Lexington next Saturday night under the lights to face a top 10 Kentucky team that they've struggled with as of late. So they'll get an extra day to do those corrections tomorrow and start game planning a day early for the Cats. Yeah, Alyssa, they want to get it right tonight because six straight SEC games on the horizon for the Gamecocks. Speaking of horizon, South Carolina State going deep and Corey Fields overthrew his intended target, Shaq Davis, who is one of the premier receivers, not just in the FCS level, uh, but around the country getting a lot of notoriety on a 6'5", 185-pound frame. The guy's a sensational athlete. Oh, he, he jumps off the tape as soon as you turn it on, and the size, he looks like an NFL receiver. He feels like 6'5", 180, like you alluded to, and really, he's their big playmaker, and they're going to move him around. He's really taking the time this offseason to not only learn the, the X position or the Z position, but be able to be in the slot to get matched up against nickels and safeties, see if he can win some one-on-one -on -one battles. Alex James in the backfield, they'll throw it on third down, little bubble screen on the outside, and South Carolina read it well, only a gain of a couple, and that'll bring up a fourth down and about three for South Carolina State, and here comes their punting unit. Oh, that's a great job. They're bringing an all-out blitz right there, and you could not have asked for a better play design. You want to bring the pressure? That's fine. I'll throw a quick screen to the outside, a tunnel screen. That's where you usually feel like the big plays are made, but 
Rakeem White in that defense is able to make a big stop. They got to get this to fourth down. Why do you run that play to the short side of the field, not try to get it to the wide side where you got a little more room to run? Get the ball to the quarterback's hands. Yeah. You're feeling the pressure. Get it out now. Get it to a skilled guy and see what he can do in space. Plus, easier for offense alignment to also get out there to make some kick-out blocks. Shorter distance to travel, yep. certainly, for the big boys. Ball start. Offense, number 35. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. So that'll back him up five. South Carolina going with the double safeties back to return this punt. Josh Van and Marion Brown. Roberts gets this punt away. It's a wobbly kick. It hits at midfield and be down by South Carolina State. So Gamecocks will have the football short field. They've had a couple of possessions, an interception, and a punt. They'll try to turn the page on that when we come back. moments made easy. That's totally Target. Well, a big piece for South Carolina not playing. That's Dylan Wan. I'm out with a foot injury. Fifth year senior out of Tucker, Georgia. You know, it leads me to this. If South Carolina, a couple of possessions, not much to show for it. O line need to be a little play a little better, a little more aggression. Yep. Well, and then you got to make plays too. I mean, the, 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 the post route, for goodness sakes, was in the receiver's hands. Like, when you have an opportunity to make explosive plays, and we've seen a lot of bubbles and quick screens from this team the past two weeks, you got to catch the football. So that was a big issue. But yeah, this is a game where you feel like you should dominate up front. And when you don't have that work together with the offense line, it makes it a little bit tougher. Boy, straight handoff. Lloyd hits the hole in a hurry, but it closed rather quickly as Barber, big nose tackle. 290-pounder making the play for the Bulldogs. Well, first two drives, as we said, that the interception on the on the second play of the game, and then four plays in punt. You know, I, I, I want to see Spencer rip it at some point. I just thought the confidence last week is just growing. They'll keep it on the ground, but Lloyd has a hold to the right side, making a man miss, driving down inside the 20-yard line. Jalen Barr hanging on for dear life after a 31-yard pickup. Well, that's what he can do. You give him a little bit of space and the explosion. And, and, and you're not going to take him down with an arm tackle. We see it over and over again, not just with him, but all the running backs here for South Carolina. They run with anger and passion. And then they'll want to take a dude on at the third level. Coming near side pass caught there by Brown. He breaks a tackle and falls forward inside the 10, down to the 7. Make it the 8-yard line. It'll be first and goal, South Carolina, after the 11-yard pickup. And I just love the blocking on the outside, whether it's, you know, Stogner was in there in the slot position or these receivers. And this is something they practice every day, 2-1-2. Two, two. two receivers versus two DBs with a running back catching out of the flat or a number three receiver and be able to hold up on the outside. You can't cut, got to be able to lock up. And they've been doing a great job here the past couple weeks. They'll dump it off underneath, going to Nate Atkins. And a big hit around the six-yard line brings him down. That's a great job from Nichols, the safety. The way the interception there on the first possession of the game coming down, knocking fade. There's something they like to do, run, 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 run. And then all of a sudden, Spencer's going to pull it, come out the back end, and he stayed home, was able to make the tackle. Dude, that football oh. came out of there a little bit late. 
Wayne Nichols maybe thought he came up with the football. They won't stop it. And they'll continue to play on. It'll be second down and goal from the sixth. A couple of tight ends in the game for South Carolina coming near side. Here is Juice Wells. He is wrapped up at the five. It'll be third down and goal. Kendall Moultrie playing well on the outside for the Bulldogs. Yeah, what we always say for offensive guys, these are your moments to earn your scholarship. This is why you're on scholarship. You're one on one. Make a man miss in the open field and get in the end zone. And that's what elite teams do and elite players. When you get inside the five yard line, ain't no one taking me down. Got to make a guy miss. Third down and goal from the five. Atkins comes in motion, sets up in the slot to the right. Pressure comes. Rattler lofts it up in the air. Here's Lloyd. It's a foot race to the goal line, and that'll be a touchdown. South Carolina with a face mask thrown in there. Well, we just said it inside the five-yard line. Who are my elite players? Who's the guy that's going to say, ain't no one stopping me from getting in the end zone? Well, we know Lloyd has that mentality. We see it over and over again. Doesn't matter if you're going to grab his face mask. He smells the end zone. He's going to find a way to get in there for the first touchdown of the game. That's a man that's 5'9", 212 pounds. Personal foul, face mask, defense number five. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The result of the play is a touchdown. Face mask. Mm. Lloyd hanging on and gets in the end zone. By the way, his 5'9-212 a little different than my 5'9-212. <laughs> <laughs> Just say hey, But he ain't hitting the golf ball to Anthony as well as you do, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's a scary, scary, scary tackle there. But love him just being able to essentially weave. I mean, defense line does a great job. The running back wants to come through the line, knock him around, and, and, and it goes back to the mentality. And what we've seen from him this year is he won't be stopped. Defense alignment trying to hold me. Guy trying to rip me down by my face, Bass. I don't care. Give me the ball in space and watch, watch what I can do with it. Boy, well, ran a little timid last year. Coming off that knee injury. And Shane Beamer said confidence is the only thing he needed. And he is on full display right now as a confident running back. On a complete running back, too. It's not just running between the tackles, but if you're able to demonstrate your ability to catch the ball in the backfield, turn up and, and make plays like that, you know, that's 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 a, a quarterback's best friend. I mean, we came to the game talking about, you know, how do you make Spencer Rattler comfortable, run the football, and also be able to hit him out of the backfield. Clearly a touchdown there, ball crossing the plane. Oh, yeah, that's clearly. See, this, this is... Yeah. And this is when uh, when we complain about games being long in college football. I just like right here. This is right. this is easy. Like what, this is a touchdown. Like why why are we taking time to review this right now? But <laughs> yeah, I, I... unless they're trying to look at something else. After video review, the ruling is confirmed. Touchdown. Uh, uh, that should be one look. And let's yeah, on. let's go. Well, South Carolina fans probably liked watching it three or four or five times as they score the first points of the game, looking to make it a 7-0 game. Mitch Jeter. The old swing and gateway, unique setup here. They're going to go ahead and run it. They'll go with the big fella underneath. Taka Hemingway into the end zone. Taka, Taka. Like a he, hunk of truck. Yeah, well, you didn't have to do much truck in there. It was kind of just like, all right, you want to go light box? Just snapping the ball, and let's get two points on the bar. Hey, it's, it's three for three. You had three offensive linemen with three defensive players and a guy that weighs 300 pounds. Let's go. Come hey, on. Those three weren't going to make a tackle on Tonkin. No, no chance. You could have left one of them alone. He would have talked them over, if that's a word. Is that? Yeah, it, it is it, now. It, it is it, now. We just made it yep. a word. Yeah. You'll be in the dictionary next year. <laughs> it's a 7 nothing, excuse me, 8 nothing ball game. Don't want to take a point away from Tonka, that's for sure. What do we call that, Beamer ball? Is that, does, that, does that jump into the classification yeah, of, absolutely. of Beamer ball right there? Some sort of special team play that 
Only if you have the last name Beamer are you thinking of that on a short week. Usually it's like, okay, special teams, just go out there and do what you need to do. No, 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 no. Beamer ball, even with less days to repair, is going to find a way to sneak its little nose out there and make a play. You don't think Kentucky's right now circling that play yeah. next week. They'll, have, they'll probably have uh, maybe four or five guys lined up over the ball with some size to them. A short squib kick bounces around, picked up there by Richard Bailey. Well, here's a look at Saturday's Week 5 SEC Network College football lineup. Number 17, Texas A&M takes on Mississippi State as we start the day at 4 Eastern since this game was switched to a Thursday night. Then at 7.30 Eastern, number one Georgia is in Columbia, squaring off against Missouri in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Both those games available on the ESPN app. Man, that a and Mississippi State game is going to be... Yeah, I don't know what to make of that. It's going to be a slugfest. I think it's going to be heavy, heavy, heavy defense. As we look at, I think, the best player in all of college football, Brock Bowers. I still know how you stop him. There'll be a re-kick. So, they're going to re-kick this football. I didn't get the front end of that. Maybe we can get further explanation because it seems like both teams are somewhat confused. You at home heard exactly what I heard, and that was re-kick was the only word I heard. Pete Limbo, special teams coordinator. You know, interesting with the wind howling as much as it is, you know, probably changes a few things in his eyes in terms of how they want to handle it. Well, they just gained another five yards. Whatever the penalty was, was against South Carolina State. Kicking off very weird from the opposing team's 45-yard line, plus 45. Of course, they had the 15-yard penalty to start this kickoff from the face mask. Go ahead, just try to split the uprights. Why not? Alex Herrera. It's an onside kick and came up a little bit shy of where they needed it to go and South Carolina State steps up and recovers the football. Not a bad idea when you're no. on the other side of the field. Yeah, I, I don't hit it at all. It's uh, obviously not successful, but a better situation to do that than old Frosty Boy at Nebraska week zero over there in Ireland. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> that, that didn't go well. Oh, that did not go well. <laughs> Ah, just got to give it a little bit more juice, my man. Got to get the 10 yards. It's like one of your putts. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> wow. A little wobbly. Oh, short. never leave the putt short. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Shane Beamer trying to sneak another possession out. Quarterback. Tyrese Nick. He'll keep it. He's on the run. He is down to the 30-yard line. A flag comes out back at the 40, however. A couple of flags now drop at the 40-yard line, but you saw a little mm. of what Tyrese Nick can bring to the table. Oh, and Tyrese was a starting quarterback back in 2018, halfway through 19 before Fields took over, was injured, and now coming back from injury, and you see the explosion. Bain will make a safety miss at the third level and take it, and we'll see what the penalty is, most likely bringing it back. As you see an animated coach buddy over there on the sideline, during the run, personal foul, illegal blindside block, offense number 22. The 15-yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. After enforcement, it'll be first down. Boy, buddy, Pugh is hot over there, and one of the emphasis this year by the officials is to keep coaches off the field when discussing plays like this with the officiating crew. Oh, we're going to follow Alex James, number 22, see if we get a view of him. and. Uh, don't love it, don't love it, don't love it. I know we're trying to make this game a little bit safer, but sometimes yeah. I'm with Buddy on that one. That's a little bit too safe. Boy, it just He's, cost him. Yeah. All right, first and 10 now from the 45-yard line. 
first, excuse me, first and one from the 45-yard line. And there goes Tyrese Nick again. He'll have the first down inside the 45 of South Carolina. That's a 12-yard pickup. Well, we talk about this offense trying to get the run game going, and, and, and we knew the, you know, with getting Flowers back at running back was going to be a, a huge keep. And now all of a sudden you see a quarterback like Nick, and it just presents an, an issue for defensively having that extra hat to be able to run the football. Hand it off this time to Flowers. And all of a sudden you're seeing a defense that was a little bit slow to react on that play. You get two back-to-back -back quarterback pulls the previous two plays. All of a sudden linebackers aren't flowing as fast. A little bit hesitant with number three back there at the quarterback spot. And you're able to rip off a five-yard gain with Flowers there on first down. Tyrese Nick will stay in the game. Tyrese started for South Carolina State 2018 and half of 2019. Lost his job and then torn Achilles heel. So he is now healthy. And but he Pew telling us that uh, we were going to see more of him moving forward, not just today, but the rest of the season, giving them just that extra dimension in the run game as Flowers is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. I would watch him in pregame too. He can throw the football. Uh, it's going to be mostly for him getting in here and, and adding that threat of a run, especially with the zone reads. But if he gets a one-on-one -on -one opportunity at some point, especially with Davis, number one, on the outside, you know, based on what we saw earlier in this game, and it's you know, a little bit windy out there, but he's he, more than capable thrower out there as well. Third down and five. Nick keeps it and is hammered as he works the left side. And now it'll be fourth down. Gilbert Edmond making the big play for South Carolina. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with this one. I'm going for it here. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, at, the, you're at the 37-yard line. Uh, I don't think you really gain much here. I mean, this is, you're on the road, you're big time underdogs, you're in plus territory, you know, inside the 40 yard line with fourth and manageable. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my offense on the field here. Well, yeah, but good job by South Carolina though. They haven't won a game against an FBS opponent in the school's history. Yep. Sometimes you got to take a few chances, but a good punt there, though, will go out the five-yard line. So in that respect, it certainly worked out. Now you have a full field for South Carolina to work with, and maybe you can get it back and get de decent field position if your defense can stand up. Yeah, the issue is I just wonder how many opportunities they're going to have throughout this game inside the red, inside the, the plus territory, yeah. where you're, you're actually moving the ball decently. So you know, you, you obviously you hope that, that that your defense is able to get, get you a three and out. You get the ball back inside the 50-yard line once again, but I don't know, these are games where you try to take advantage if you're the major underdog anytime you get in the plus territory. Spencer Rattler back on the field. He's 6 of 7 for 31 yards. The only incompletion was a great ball that he threw deep down the field that was batted in the air by his own receiver and intercepted by South Carolina State. Ball start, offense, number 52. The penalties half the distance to the goal remains first down. So now South Carolina will huddle up in that end zone. It'll be first down and 12. A couple of tight ends. Well, they've got some good tight ends at South Carolina. Jaheim Bell, Austin Stogner, Nate Atkins. Trayvon Kinnian, the throw from the end zone, pass caught there by Juice Wells. He'll get it out over the five and drop at the seven, maybe eight yard line to give him five. Well, it's a nice confident throw there from, from Spencer Rattler. And, you know, goal number one when you're backed up, let's see if you can get one first down. Allow your punter to at least punt the ball from not inside his own end zone. But the quick, throw, the quick game is great for Spencer Rattler. It, 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 the ball comes out with some energy, with some anticipation and accuracy. I'm excited to see if they take some shots here, though, heading into the second quarter at some point. That post ball start the game was beautiful. 
They keep it on the ground on second down and nowhere to run. They may even lost a half a yard. You know, we're talking about playmakers. Well, they've got those on the tight end spot. Jaheim Bell's a very versatile guy. They've lined him up in the backfield, tight end. you got Stogner, who played great at Oklahoma. Former All-Big 12 tight end. Nate Atkins had his first catch of the season earlier today. He transferred in from East Tennessee State. Well, I want to see, I want to see Bell be utilized a little bit more. And in talking with the coaching staff, you know, they go to Brock Bowers. They, they, they kind of showed him some tape of Brock from a couple weeks ago and say, man, if you want to be this guy, you have that kind of talent. Let's go out there and do it now, and we need you to commit to it. A free play coming up. South Carolina State just kind of played dead at the line of scrimmage, and that one is overthrown by a good five or six yards by Rattler trying to hit Jaheim Bell. Offside, defense, number 43. Five-yard penalties enforced from the previous spot. Repeat, third down. Well, it's sticking on the, the, the Bell theme here. The, there's no doubt that, that offenses nowadays are all about finding that matchup. How can I get one of my superior offensive players, athletes, matched up against a guy that, that struggles on your defense, whether it's a linebacker or a safety? And he is that chess piece. He's that guy that you can move around, move him in the slot, single him up backside, and allow the quarterback to take those one-on-one -on -one shots with him. I was kidding on that. Around a moment ago, the fourth tight end, slash tight end. They do so much with their tight ends, hard to, hard to put them in a position. Matter of fact, Marcus Satterfield calls it a wide back almost. And a timeout going to have to be taken by South, South Carolina. South Carolina has called their first charge time out of the half. It'll be 30 seconds in length. A little sloppy here from South Carolina. Well, we're starting to see some of the issues with, with a short week. You know, it's an adjustment. It's not like, you know, with NFL games, like, you know, like, hey, we're playing on Sunday and we know we have to get up and get ready to go for Thursday. And there's some there's some preparation ahead of time from the coaching staff to be to be ready to go for that. And, you know, these guys somewhat short notice finding out that, hey, we got to essentially accelerate our week by two days to get ready for a game on a Thursday night. And I think you said in the pre 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 show. And they still got school. You know, it's not, these guys aren't professionals. They don't have all day on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to go out there and, and, and get ready for these games. There's a lot of other responsibilities. So it is a little bit tougher on a short week. Well, no school tomorrow. They cancel classes here at South Carolina. Rattler dumps it off underneath. Pass caught there by Christian Beal Smith. And that should be good enough for the first down. He just did get to the 15-yard line. So that'll keep the drive alive. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. South Carolina gets a touchdown from Marshawn Lloyd and a two-point conversion from Tonka Hemingway. That's right, Tonka with a two-point conversion. On a Thursday night, South Carolina leads it eight to nothing over their neighbors just 45 miles away. Back in a moment. moments made easy. That's totally Target. Two of the best dudes right there, Marty and McGee. Of course, you know every Saturday you can see the boys at SEC Nation as they bring you extensive SEC game previews with the latest news from around the conference that you won't find anywhere else. This week, the guys will be in Oxford at 9 a.m. Eastern, followed by an SEC Nation that takes you right to kickoff as 7th-ranked Kentucky meets 14th-ranked Ole Miss. Both are right here on the network and, of course, on the ESPN app. 
First down and 10 for the Gamecocks. Rather, will play fake, going up top, throws another nice deep ball, and it is caught around the 35-yard line by Jalen Brooks, who goes up high and hangs on. Boy, what a throw from Spencer Rattler. Yeah, and just a little bit underthrown, but I like it. Throw it high for the big receiver. Let him go up there and get it. Beautiful to his line. He does a great job with the play action. He knows his one-on-one. -on -one. Would have loved to see him throw it a little bit more across the field, but man, go up, throw it up there for the big completion. But Jalen Brown been playing really well of late, or Jalen Brooks for this team. Makes the catch there inside the 25, down to the 24. I mean, you love to see that from a quarterback. That's when you build the trust between, let's not forget, this is Spencer Rattler's first season. Once again, it's only, you know, still the, the first quarter of the year, third of the year, so the, the chemistry within games are still being built. That trust factor is still being built between quarterback and receiver. And, you know, now that Spencer knows that, hey, man, I throw it up there for Brooks, he's not afraid to go up there and, and, and snag that thing for me. Well, the 54-yard pickup sets up South Carolina in good shape. Second down and five here. Juju McDowell, first time we see him in the backfield. They'll fake it there. Quick throw to the wide side of the field. Pass is caught by Jaheim Bell. Look at him making some moves inside the 15 and popped out of bounds around the 12. Gain of 13. Well, that's a creative way to get him the football. You know, put him in the slot, that RPO run pass option for Spencer, who does a tremendous job with it. Seeing he has numbers, and let's get the ball to the big guy with a couple blockers out front. And First down and 10. They get a first down around the two-yard line. Juju McDowell stays in the game, and they will hand it to him off the left side. Some good blocks on the outside to the five-yard line, down to the four-yard line. Juju a little, or excuse me, Josh Van a little slow to get up. Now, once again, Stogner has been tremendous on these tight end wraparound blocks coming from right to left, leading the Calvary around the outside for his running backs. You can tell just watching, especially early on this game, there's such an emphasis on perimeter blocking, whether tight ends or receivers. Juju McDowell straight up the middle. He'll get it down to the inside the two, so that'll be good enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal for South Carolina. And it's been a great drive, starting at their own five-yard line. And this is what you worry about. I mean, we're talking about South Carolina State having a chance there on fourth and five at the 35-yard line, 37-yard yeah. line. Decides to punt the ball, great punt, but you know, they were able to convert the first down South Carolina, then the big explosive pass play to Brooks, and now all of a sudden you're knocking on the door for a possible touchdown. Big boys in the game here on a first and goal. They'll hand it off to Jaheim Bell, and they're going to give him the touchdown. Just a sea of humanity on the goal line, but Bell somehow got across the goal line and a touchdown for South Carolina. That's a great, another fantastic way to get Bell involved in this football game. A few plays ago, you get him on a swing pass, get him a touch, and then you get in this wean back formation and just a fullback dive, allow him to use his body to get in there for the touchdown. So now South Carolina lines up for a traditional point after. Oh, that's just so boring. Right after the last I mean, two-point conversion, right? It worked like, hey, listen, I'm putting the big guy out there until they uh, until they want to adjust. Put Tonka, give it to Tonka. How about nine plays and 95 yards? It's the longest drive of the season, surpassing the 88-yard drive they had against Arkansas. Jeter's point after is up and good. So now South Carolina stretches their lead to 15 to nothing. 12.04 to go second quarter here in Columbia, South Carolina. Well, not the largest crowd here at Williams-Brice Stadium, but certainly full of energy on a cool, crisp evening with the wind gusts getting up 30 miles an hour, maybe beyond at this point. 15 to nothing, Gamecocks out in front over South Carolina State. South Carolina State 0-21 against the FBS. 
They have lost to South Carolina a couple of times in 09 and 07. Boy, Spencer Rattler's turned things around since that opening pick, huh? 10 of 10, 105, a touchdown. Love to see that, the maturity of him, a guy that's played a lot of football. You know, not the way you want to start a game. I've had a couple moments like that where you're like, really, you know, especially when it wasn't his fault either. Like, he kind of, you're able to bounce back from that and could come back with another post ball and, and give his receivers opportunity to go up there and make a play. I think he's going to be just fine. You know, he, you talk to the coaching staff and, you know, he went from an, from an offense where he was essentially going full field read. So he was working from right to left or left to right. And a lot of this offense right now is more one high, two high read. So on one side of the field, just your single high beater. On the other side of the field, your two high beater. And it just takes some time to get the footwork, to get your eyes in the right spot, to be able to go out there and compete at a high level each and every week. And you saw his eyes in the wrong space a little bit early on the season, but he's definitely catching up with his playbook now. See if South Carolina State can mount some sort of offensive attack here. Flowers on the carry off the left side. A little surprised that Corey Fields is back in there at quarterback. And Tyrese Nick, who came in there this previous possession, and was absolutely electric with, with running the football. And we knew he was gonna play a little bit, but man, the way he moved them into, to essentially inside the 40 yard line, you think he'd get a little bit more playing time here. Fields, 46% completion percentage on the year, averaging about 166 yards passing per game. And they finally get the ball to Shaq Davis, their FCS All-American, first team all MEAC. Six-yard pickup on that one, the youngster out of Somerville High School. And just keep moving him around. I mean, you saw him last week in the slot, and they went four verticals, and they hit him right down the seam for a big explosive play. And, you know, right now you see South Carolina, they're going to play two high safeties to his side. They don't want to get these corners matched up one-on-one -on -one with him, especially with that length. And off right side, there'll be a first down. Flowers out over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Oh, that's a great thing. When you get Davis backside one-on-one -on -one and you force a team to play two high safeties, it just it opens you up for the ability to run the football in those type of situations. It's third and short. It's a six-man box. You got six blockers, five offensive linemen, one tight end to be able to handle it. First, first uh, third down conversion for South Carolina State. Now working the left side, nowhere to run. He maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Flowers hit there. Now dropped at the line by Zach Pickens. Yeah, and what we're seeing too is they're, they're, they're showing a too high safety. So the illusion of less guys in the box where they're playing a tight, essentially a tight quarters coverage. So these safeties are going to be extremely aggressive in the run game. Anytime they see any sort of run action, they're going to be coming up there to fill, to add that seventh and eighth defender inside the box. Allows you to get some play action passes later. Here comes some heat. Fields going up top, and there is a flag. That'll be a hold or pass interference against Cam Smith. Well, that's one thing you worry about there in coverage. Pass interference, defense, number nine. 15-yard penalties enforced in the previous spot. It includes an automatic first down. When you start playing these heavy quarters coverage or single high coverage, and these guys are going to press man the man. I see right here, one-on-one, -on -one and just wraps him and rips the jersey, not allowing the receiver to get back to the outside. So that'll set up South Carolina State across midfield at the 48-yard line. That's why they have some DBs practice with like boxing gloves on, so you can't do that little, it's a little subtle grabs. You don't think it's a lot, but the ref sees you grab jersey, they're gonna call it. Flowers trying to stretch it to the wide side, and Gamecocks all over that one. Led by Sherrod Green, these two linebackers, and Green and Brad Johnson. They've combined coming into this game for 33 tackles. Good to see Green back there. Now in his sixth year, healthy after a couple of really bad injuries, an ankle injury in 21, of course, had the hip injury in 20. Three stops tonight. 
Well, they need those guys to step up. They, they're they're miss missing their, their passionate leader there and, and Kaba, who, who's out for the season. So those guys have been asked to play an even bigger role in this defense. Second down and 10 now for the Bulldogs. Alex James in the backfield. Fields will throw over the middle, passes a little bit behind his intended target. I think it was there if he leads him a little bit. Mm -hmm. Instead, it'll fall to the turf and be third down and 10. Well, we just try to aim it, you know. Th these are passes where you just you can't aim the ball over the middle of the field. You just got to rip it. You see that it's there. And I don't know if the, the, the referee being in the middle of the field kind of spooked him or not, but, you know, gave South Carolina and R.J. Roderick an opportunity to make a play on the football. You just got to grip it and rip it, put it right there in his heart, see if he can split the safeties for a big explosive play. Third down and 10. Gamecocks bring an extra rusher. Ball is thrown high. There's a flag down around the 20 yard line. They were trying to hit Shaq Davis. Yeah, they're going to get dialed for holding. I mean, that's when it happens when you have a 6 5 receiver one on one. And you have to understand that you're going to get some safety support. You know, he's playing Last outside leverage. Defense, number 24. 15 yard penalties enforced in the previous spot and includes an automatic first down. Now he does a great job. He has outside leverage. He forces Shaq to go inside release on the go ball, knowing that he has a high safety support, which ended up being the guy making the reception. Just don't grab. I know he's got some size on you, but that's once again why you're funneling him to the more the middle of the field, because you know you get some support from the high safety. Well, they had some pass interference issues against Charlotte last week, and looks like they are carried over at least to this drive anyway. First down and 10. And you see Tyrese Nick back in the game, breaks a tackle. There's a flag down the backfield, though. Nick will take it to the end zone. He crosses the goal line, but this one, let's see if it's Holding coming back. Offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty oh. from the spot of the flag. Repeat first Chris down. Chris Simon with the hold, and that'll wave off the excellent run by Tyrese Nick. Man, I, and I want to get another view of this. I don't even think he needed to hold the defender on this one. I think his quarterback was... On the outside, he's going to be a right tackle, number 71. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if he would have got around or not, but that's, that's. I think if he just lets him go. Just let him go. Just let him go, 100%. You know, the penalties we've seen on this drive, whether it's South Carolina on defense or that penalty right there, to me, those are lazy penalties. Those are. You know, just just try to take the easy way out like defensively like just don't hold the guy do, do believe in your technique and same thing right there do what you need to do and at some point you just have to realize i gotta let this guy go timeout taken by south carolina state south carolina has called their first time out of the half south carolina state calls the timeout buddy pew trying to get some answers from his team right now 15 nothing we'll step aside as well That's totally Target. Here's a look at Saturday's Week 5 SEC Network College football lineup, and we are shy one game. That's because we're playing it right now here in Columbia. Don't forget, at 4 o'clock Eastern, boy, it's a good one over in Starkville. 17th ranked Texas A&M against the Bulldogs. Then at 7.30, a chance to see the number one team in the country travel up north to Columbia, Missouri to take on the Tigers, our SEC Saturday night matchup. Both those games, of course, available on the ESPN app. 
Pretty good look at uh, what's going on in the league right now. Georgia and Alabama leading the way, but here comes Kentucky and Tennessee. You know what's crazy? Just this, how much the East has stepped up this year. Yeah. I mean, this league has all been about the West side, and, and all of a sudden you're seeing some teams emerge on, on the other side of the conference. Boy, another open receiver. That pass is behind the intended target. And it looks like, though, Justin Smith-Brown may have caught that one awkwardly off a finger. Yeah, right now, just Corey Fields throwing over the middle of the field. You just don't see a lot of confidence. And he forced a couple balls last week over the middle of the field, but that was later in the game, turned into an interception. So it's a tough spot. You listen, throwing to the outside is easier. It's just easier on your vision. Over the middle of the field, there's a lot of bodies, a lot of moving parts, but you know, the last thing you want to do is, is not throw a confident football. That's when mistakes start to happen. Well, that does not look good for Smith Brown over there. Getting attended to, flagged down on the far side. That play went nowhere, might have lost a yard. Dial again coming up to make a play, so. Well, this is a situation right here where you, know, you have to be realistic as a quarterback. The chance of getting the first down in this situation are pretty slim. Let's see if we can get something in that 7 to 10 range. The middle of the field's been open. He's just been inaccurate throwing across there. We'll see if they want to go two high safeties again. By the way, that was a piece of trash and not a flag on the field. Now there's a flag. That one is picked off. Gerard Green with the interception. He is pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line by Cam Johnson, the offensive lineman. But a return of 26 yards. Well, I guess that's why he doesn't want to throw over the middle of the field. Yeah. For that, that, that's, that answers that question. <laughs> uh, directly to the defender. Personal foul, face mask, offense number 71. The 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. The results play as a first down for South Carolina. I mean, there's three Gamecocks in the area. I, I, and, and trying to – I mean, at least he threw it with some confidence. I've been asking for him to throw right, it with right, confidence right, right. over Zip the it in field, there. which he did. <laughs> yeah. uh, just don't throw it when there's three red jerseys all in one area as you try to throw a dig route coming from the uh, left to right side of the screen. So, a uh, great job by, by South Carolina. I mean, those were the plays that they did not make last week especially early on in the game. Later in the game, they started to get some interceptions, but, you know, first half struggled with balls in their hands to finish it off. So great by them to, to continue to get off the field and make some plays. Three tackles, an interception, half a sack for Sherrod Green tonight. Take a shot. Yeah, short field right here. Sets up at the 30-yard line. Jaheim Bell goes in motion. They'll fake it that way and run near side and really nowhere to run. No gain on the play. I know your running back's running well, but this is an opportunity just to, to, to continue to build confidence in the passing game and and not just with the, the, the bubbles. Listen, you the bubbles are great. And it's a great addition to the game, but you're going to have to continue to build confidence with these receivers and Rattler, Rattler throwing the ball vertically down the field. And you're right now against tight quarters coverage. You just got to turn over. Let that puppy fly. On second down, looks like they're trying to go deep. Nothing there, but tried to unload it underneath to Nate Atkins, and that's incomplete. You know, you mentioned those short passes. How about last week as you break down the pass plays for Spencer Rattler? He was 12 out of 13 for 133 yards on throws at or behind the line of scrimmage. On throws beyond the line of scrimmage, he was 5 of 10 for 54 yards. So that little dink dump, as you like to call yeah. it, or who, you know. It, well, those should be, those are high percentage throws. I mean, if you're a quarterback at this level, you should be completing majority of those plays. I mean, it's a quick pass, easy pass. You practice it all the time. So I, I'm not surprised by the difference, but he definitely needs to improve on plays on the field. Makes a man miss. Rattler steps up, dances around, and he'll get it down to the 21-yard line. Let's go down to Alyssa. Yeah, guys, you're talking about uh, Spencer Rattler. One of the things that head coach Shane Beamer told us yesterday during meetings that he's been working on with him is the pressure element. Of course, he comes in a highly touted recruit, transfers from OU. 
after having been in Heisman hopeful a season ago, and he feels all this pressure on his shoulders. He puts the most pressure on himself out of everybody. Shane Beamer said basically before every single game, he goes over, reminds Spencer. Offside, defense, number five. Five-yard penalties enforced from the previous spot. The results in the first down. That he doesn't have to be Superman. I was going to get that out, guys. Yeah, I knew. I, yeah, I was waiting to stay with it. I love it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. Obviously, he comes here and, you know, you come from Oklahoma, a very proud program that's had some great success. And Spencer was a part of some really good games yep. and some wins. And people expect so much out of him coming here. And there's an added pressure put on your shoulders. Well, especially when, when the expectations were like, we didn't have a quarterback last year. We went through a grad transfer and putting receivers at quarterback. And now we have a legitimate guy that's played a lot of football. Here's first and 10. Lofts it up in the air and a little miscommunication. He was trying to hit Josh Van with it. He stopped at the goal line. Oh, he's seen all that pressure, and he wants that. You know, when you when you bring a cover zero pressure, there is no middle middle of the field support. He wants his guy to essentially put that right foot in the ground, hit that seam, and let me lob it to the back of the end zone and go get it. And you know, this goes back to you know why South Carolina fans wanted to see them throw the football tonight. It, you know, obviously you want to see big explosive plays, but you also want to work out some of these kinks. Like you go back in the film tomorrow and say, hey man, when it's zero and you got this, like I'm throwing it here. Go go get it. And you got to work that out before SEC play starts next week. Get a couple of tight ends. They'll run the left side with Lloyd. He is being chased down and dropped for a five-yard loss. Well done by Jalen Barr to catch up to Marshawn Lloyd and drag him to the turf. Five tackles for Barr tonight. Well, they've done a good job. I mean, the South Carolina, listen, they're going to have their, their, their talents at the running, spot, running back spot. But, you know, we've seen this defense line have their moments here in the first half where they're able to get some penetration and get some TFLs. So now third down and 14. They got to get it inside the six-yard line for a first down. Clean pocket passes, intercepted at the two-yard line, right through the hands of Leggett, who bobbled the first interception. And you see the disbelief from the fans. I mean, five interceptions heading into this game. That's two now, and yeah, I want to get another better look at this one. But I, you know, I was just about to, to praise him because the throw was with with such a great anticipation. Well, you mentioned the fans in disbelief. I think South Carolina's bench is in disbelief. Great anticipation, delivers a catchable football. Once again, another tipped interception for Spencer Rattler. That young fella right there is saying, hey man, throw me the ball. <laughs> 15 nothing South Carolina out in front. Hey, coming up on the Farm Ridge Halftime Report, fourth rank, four ranked teams hit the road this weekend. And South Carolina State will run it on first down, backed up. So at the Farm Ridge Halftime Report, we'll talk about the four ranked teams that hit the road this weekend. A battle of the Tigers on the Plains. And our game not the only one moved for rain. Alyssa Lang will be in multiple places. You know, there's a reason she was smiling so much when we got here. I thought it's because she was coming back to her alma mater, but it's because she's getting two checks. Halftime and the game. Yeah. And she and she only had dinner for herself. For right, sure. exactly. Right. She thought she could buy it. Yeah, she doesn't bring us sandwiches. <laughs> Four minutes to go before halftime. Here is Nick across the 10 out to the 11th. That'll make a manageable third down coming up. Third down and about two after the six yard pickup. And I'm interested, you know, as we obviously conclude this, get closer, closer to halftime, and, you know, as you start to think about what this second half is going to look like for South Carolina State. Right now, you're only down 15 nothing, two scores, and obviously we'll see if, if South Carolina can get the ball back here with a third down stop. But, yeah, I'm already thinking as a coaching staff that, that Tyrese Nick has kind of been our guy. No doubt. The playmaker, and I understand that, you know, you want to get Shaq the ball and you need more of a throwing quarterback. But right now, number three's been your guy in this first half. They'll hand it off again. They needed a couple of yards. I think they only got one, maybe, as they went with Flowers. 
Uh, so now it's fourth down, and there's 3.13 on the clock. So it's going to be about fourth and one. South Carolina will take a timeout to stop the clock right there and force the punt. We'll step aside as well. Gamecocks lead it by 15. Well, some discussion of whether or not South Carolina State would go for it despite being backed up just outside the 10-yard line. But they will send out the punt team. And... So regardless, unless there's some sort of miscue here, South Carolina is going to have it in South Carolina State territory for a short drive. Dyson Roberts, another line drive kick. Josh Fan will let this one hit. I tell you what, this the best punt of the night for Dyson Roberts just to get that across the 50-yard line. You know, we were wondering if they might go for it. Well, here's how come we knew they were going to punt it. This is their offensive coordinator, Bennett Swagger, during the time. <laughs> we're sitting here talking about what would you run and all that. Well, we watched Bennett Swagger run, and he was well. He was out of there. He needed to take a little break yep. for a second. So when he got up and left during that timeout, there's no way they were going to go for it. <laughs> Thought he's going to run to our booth and say, "Are you crazy? There's yeah. no chance I'm going for it <laughs> in my own 15-yard line." Uh, well, Rattler tried to go for it. He lofts it up far side, trying to get his guy to make a play. And there are a couple of flags that come out. He was trying to hit uh, Wells on the far side. And Chris Simmons over there in coverage. Listen, last time Spencer Rattler threw an interception. Pass interference, defense number 24. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot includes an automatic first down. He later went on to go, what, 10 of 10, 105, and a touchdown. So, and once again, for those who have missed those first two picks of the game, I would not put that on Spencer at all. I thought both balls were thrown in a spot where his guy could go make a play. That is nine penalties for 90 yards in South Carolina State. And a couple of them were huge. One of them took a touchdown off the yep. board. Listen, you're on the road. Playing against a team like South Carolina, man, the last thing you can do is, one, take points off the board, as you allude to, that, that long touchdown run, and then give them second chances with, with penalties throughout this game. It's a lot, that's, that's, that's a lot of penalties for a, half, for a game, not just a half. There's going to be a correction to the clock. Please reset the game clock to two minutes, 56 seconds. Two, five, six. Thank you. Well, that was good. At least we didn't have to go like to the... I was a little worried there that yeah. they were going to have to go, like, go review again for something like that. <laughs> oh, if there's one big issue college football needs to work on. First down and 10. South Carolina's offense has put together 180 yards of offense to this point. Here's Rattler coming back shoulder throw. That one is incomplete. Back there in coverage was Zion Keith. And here's those interceptions you were talking about, and not Rattler's fault for sure. No, second play of the game, you go post route. I think he does a great job leading his receiver across the field and stumbles and, and just a, a heck of an interception from South Carolina State. And in this one, throws it with incredible anticipation. As a receiver, you're top, man. When you run these routes, you better turn around with those hands ready to catch the football. And, you know, it's frustrating for Spencer, but, I mean, he's going to go back and watch the film and say, man, they, they, not that I could do. You know, I did my job. Receivers have to now go out there and do their job. But, you know, fans are going to look at it and say, man, Spencer threw another two interceptions tonight. Coming from a quarterback. It's never our fault, ever. Here's Jeff Corstad. I'm learning that in a lot of aspects. It seems like nothing's your fault, ever. Never, never <laughs> a quarterback's fault. Uh, there's it's either the offensive line missed a block, receiver dropped the ball, ran the wrong route. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number five. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. Includes an automatic first down. 
Alyssa. You guys were just talking about those two interceptions. I was watching Leggett come off the field after that second one. He was obviously really disappointed, shaken up with himself when he sat down on the bench. Wide receivers coach Justin Stepp came over, gave him several pats on the back, and then I watched his entire wide receiver room walk up to him, give him high fives, pat him on the shoulder, try to keep his energy up because they know what he's capable of when he's on. Yeah, really good things when he's on. South Carolina moving the football, but getting some help from South Carolina State with all these penalties now, 10 of them. Boy, Rattler took a big shot. I think that ball may have bounced out. Dwayne Nichols with the hit. Rattler will come up and toss it to the official. Now, there's one thing you know when you're facing this defense. If any time you go any sort of zone read, they're going to eliminate the running back and force the quarterback to pull it and run. Clock ticking down to a minute 40. South Carolina does have a timeout remaining. Second down and four. Quick throw. That one's caught by Juice Wells. He's dancing around, trying to break a tackle. Can't get out of it. He's dropped at the 19-yard line. That'll be a gain of just a couple of yards for Juice. Nice job by Jalen Barr. Well, let's go to the previous play with Spencer Rattler running it. Oh, that's... I think that like, may come out a little bit early right yeah, there. It Could have been fun. number three turnover for Spencer, but gets away with it. Bounce right back to him and keeps this drive alive. Third down and two here. Rattler scanning the field, decides he'll run for it. He's to the 15, and flat comes out around the 10-yard line. He'll have the first down if the play holds. Spencer saw it. Hold against South Carolina State. Holding defense. The penalty is half the distance to the goal from the end of the run and includes an automatic first down. Oh, another penalty for this defense and uh, you, you can't do that going across the middle. You see the shallow cross and B.J. Davis decides to take out the receiver. And it's just been, listen, I get there's going to be penalties, but when this both these teams go back and look at some of the mistakes that have been made in this first half, it's just, I would say, once again, it's been more just pure laziness than anything. I mean, the penalties have just been atrocious for South Carolina State here in the first half. It is now. 11 for 112 yards. First and goal. Little play fake there to Lloyd. Rattler pump fakes. Reaches for the end zone and he crosses the line. Touchdown, South Carolina. And that's what he Holding does well. Defense, oh. number zero. The penalty has declined. Result for the play is a touchdown. Now, this is why you run the football. You want to get him in these situations where he's outside the pocket and has the ability to be creative with the football in his hands and had an opportunity in the back pylon or back of the end zone for a touchdown, but he knows he's one-on-one. -on -one. Quick little pump fake, put the foot in the ground, get north of the touchdown. Boy, not a whole lot there Dwayne Nichols can do in the open field with Spencer Rattler. Point after is up and good, and that'll make it a 22 to nothing lead here in the first half with just 37 seconds to go before halftime. Well, it's good to see Spencer Rattler once again after an interception come back and have some success, get his team in the end zone. I mean, it's frustrating. You know, you hate to throw interceptions. Like you always, you know, all quarterbacks should go into a season with, with goals of, hey, I'm going to take care of the football. That's number one. Take care of the football. Don't put my team in a bad situation. And that's been, you know, the biggest issue with this offense this year is just playing, just giving the ball away over and over again. And, you know, some decisions from him at times where you're kind of less scratching your head. And... 
Hey, coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of The Mighty Sound of the Southeast on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. So for Spencer Rattler, he is 13 of 18 for 121 yards. Those two interceptions we've documented and one touchdown pass, a little short pass to Marshawn Lloyd, who powered his way into the end zone. This South Carolina defense has held South Carolina State to just 85 yards, 12 yards passing, 73 yards on the ground. Short kick. So that's interesting. Did he call a fair catch? I don't know that he, they're gonna spot the ball. I think he started to run. I don't think he called fair catch. So they're gonna spot it at the 13 yard line. He took a knee. I couldn't decide what he was. The way he started looked like it was a fair catch, but then he started to run and took a knee. I think he was he was regretting his decision as soon as he caught it. He goes, that was probably, I, th I was telling myself I should have fair caught it. I did it, and now I don't want to get hit, so I'm just going to take a knee. Rakeem White back there on that kickoff return. Yeah. Martin Scott was about to blow him up. He's like, nah, it's, not today. He made a, he made a financial decision yeah, for himself there that yeah. I'm not going to get hit. <laughs> uh, oh. So South Carolina State will take a knee that time, and that should do it and get us to halftime, where the Gamecocks will talk about what could have been a few miscues along the way. But all told, a 22 to nothing lead at the break. Not all bad for South Carolina. Spencer Rattler, 13 of 18, throwing the football. Marshawn Lloyd leads him on the ground. Seven carries for 49 yards. He did have a touchdown reception along the way. Let's go down to Alyssa. Coach, a couple of turnovers, but a couple of touchdowns in the first half for your offense. How would you evaluate their performance? Pretty good, you know, had a 95-yard drive. That was big. Getting a touchdown right here in the two-minute drill, that was a great way to finish the half. You know, to me right now, the story is defensive penalties. That's allowing them to sustain drives and turnovers on offense. You know, other than that, I feel like we're playing well. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Alyssa. Always smiling. Got to love Shane Beamer. One of the most positive people outside of you that I know. 22-0, our score at the break. Spencer Rattler gets the last touchdown on the board for South Carolina. When we come back after the break, it's the Farm Ridge Halftime Report. Stay with us right here on the SEC Network. Twenty-two to nothing, South Carolina looking for back-to-back -back victories. Knocked off Charlotte last weekend, trying to take down South Carolina State on this Thursday night edition. Dave Neal, alongside former George quarterback Aaron Murray, glad you could join us. Alyssa Lang down the sidelines, of course. And uh, Aaron, obviously, South Carolina wanted to kind of put an exclamation point on this before league play gets really cranked up for them. Already two games in, but six straight coming up after this one. What'd you make of that first half? A little sloppy at time. Obviously, the turnovers are the big glare, and, and not on Spencer at all. I thought Spencer's been tremendous, putting the ball where he needs to put it, taking care of it. Receivers have to make plays down the field, so clean that up here in the second half and continue to, to, to lean on that running game. Well, there were some highlights in that first half for Spencer Rattler and company, and they look like this. Really, Spencer Rattler in the first half was very effective throwing the football, and a little short pass here to Lloyd, who kind of just willed his way into the end zone. Yeah, just give Lloyd the ball as much as you can. I mean, that's going to be – you're going to see a lot of those highlights for South Carolina fans this entire year. If he can stay healthy, he is tremendous. And, hey, little Beamer ball there at the goal line. Give it to Tonka to get in there to make it 8 to nothing for the Gamecocks. And then a guy that we want to see get moved around in different positions, Jaheim Bell putting in there for another touchdown. And then Spencer with his legs on the boot leg. One on one, the open field, make a guy miss, get inside the end zone. When they're not turning it over, they've been yeah. doing good. Just cannot continue to shoot themselves in the foot. And once again, it was not number seven's fault on that one. Well, the defense did their job. Uh, 83 total yards allowed in the first half to South Carolina State. Now, South Carolina State, they really hurt themselves. 11 penalties for 112 yards. I can't remember the last time I had a game where there were 11 penalties in a half for a team, but that was the case for South Carolina State. 
Yeah, and, and, and big penalties too. You, you you negate a touchdown run from your backup quarterback from a holding penalty. Another long run as well for a blindside block. So, you know, I think they went to the locker room saying, guys, if we just do the little things right and put ourselves in a better position and don't commit those penalties, we're looking at a closer ball game right now. South Carolina won the toss. They wanted the football to start the game, so they will kick it away to South Carolina State here to start the second half. On Again, a game that was uh, Tuesday morning finally determined that they were going to move it from Saturday at noon to Thursday because of the impending weather that was headed this way. And of course, that hurricane moving all over the place right now. Hard to predict where it will resurface again as it's out over the Atlantic Ocean. Certainly our thoughts were with those folks down in South Florida right now. Mind those, those pictures coming out of Fort Myers. Oof. Oh, devastating. Goodness. Of course, South Carolina played a game after Hugo, uh, Hurricane Hugo in 1989. They would play three days later against Georgia Tech right here at williams Bryce Stadium. Matter of fact, that Hugo destroyed their indoor facility. Had a little bubble over there uh, not too far from here. Destroyed that. that. Matter of fact, went down to Charleston and affected the Citadel and destroyed their stadium. So the Citadel would actually come here in 1989 and finish out their season. They played like three or four games here at Williams Bryce Stadium. I think if, if 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 the COVID year taught us anything, it's flexibility. And I thought we we really learned that hey man, we can move things around like the week before the week of and. It was great that these two teams were able to make it happen because at the end of the day, you want to play football. You only get so many opportunities in a season to come up here and put these helmets on and have some fun. They'll go with Tyrese. Nick, you and I were talking. What quarterback would they throw out here to start the second half? And they moved it much more effectively with Nick, and that's how they start the game for the second half. And I think right now, Kobe... Corey, excuse me, Fields is just in a, he's a little bit of a funk. We saw a guy that just was not very confident throwing the football in the first half, and this this offense just has a little different rhythm and speed with Nick in the game. Flowers on that carry. Flowers didn't play last week, banged up. Came in 24 carries with 156 yards and a couple of touchdowns on the season. Well, I'm interested at some point this half, if, if you are going to go with Tyrese Nick as your quarterback, do you open up the playbook for him a little bit more and see what he can do with his arm as well? Fresh set of downs here on first and 10. Nick will keep it, and he will have some running room. Tyrese Nick across midfield at the 45-yard line. Let's go down to Alyssa. Yeah, guys, we've talked all night about the relationship between these two programs. You talked to head coach Buddy Pugh, and he kind of compares it to a brotherly relationship. They pull for each other when they're not playing each other. They're always there to help each other out. But between the lines, these South Carolina State Bulldogs want to give the Gamecocks their best shot, despite being down 22-0 right now. Still plenty of energy on that sideline. A lot of pride with the South Carolina State team, because a lot of these guys are coming from right here in state. Yeah, they said, you know, South Carolina's not playing, but South Carolina State is. You'll see a bunch of Gamecocks at the South Carolina State game and vice versa. Boy, it's just great talking to him. What a job they did last year. They got off to a one and four start last year, did South Carolina State. They turned it around, went five and zero in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, get a berth in the Celebration Bowl to play Jackson State, who came in. Deion Sanders yep. had them at 11 and one, heavy favorites in Atlanta for that game. And they completely dominated Jackson State, 31 to 10, and won that Celebration Bowl in the HBCU National Championship. Hoping the same thing can happen here as the Bulldogs are one and two going up top. Nick has a man pass is caught around the 10 yard line by their stud receiver Shaq Davis. And it looks like it'll be just outside the 10. So first and 10 for the Bulldogs. And Shaq had a step. I mean, look at the stride to be able to get on top of the defender. Dial there, number 24, and, and, and a little bit underthrown, but I think we've we've at least answered the question, are they going to open it up in the pass game with with Nick back there at quarterback? And and I would too. And you got one out there one-on-one, -on -one, see what he can do with it. Right now, too, you're seeing a little pressure from, from South Carolina. Looks like a saw dog blitz from the outside, covers zero blitz. You're gonna get one-on-one -on -one the outside with one, top of your screen if you want to take a chance. 
They run a little option game. Toss it to Benson off the right side. He'll get a few yards inside the 10. Down to the eight yard line. Well, once again, I mean, you, you brought it up. We, the question, big question coming out of half was who was going to be the starting quarterback. And when you have a quarterback that can run and present that kind of threat to a defense, and then knowing that you have a, a NFL type receiver on the outside in Shaq Davis, you're going to get those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Safeties have to respect the quarterback and that extra hat on the offensive side running the football. On second down. They'll throw it underneath. Pass is caught there. James just shy of the goal line. It's inside the one-yard line. So first and a half a yard now for the Bulldogs. That's a great play design. You're thinking zone read. Quarterback's going to run the football. And all of a sudden, James sneaks into the flat. I mean, they've been running this over and over again. Zone read, zone read, zone read with a essentially a lead blocker to the front side if the quarterback pulls it. Not so fast. He's now an option to catch the football and a great job by the pylon cam who gets absolutely abused on this play. We'll see if he gets in. Uh, a little short. So first and goal. And Nick takes it himself. Touchdown Bulldogs. A statement out of the locker room for South Carolina State. How about eight plays and 75 yards? I mean, that was that was the perfection right there. And there was no rush. I mean, they, they they got set up. They got to line of scrimmage each and every time. They knew what they wanted to do. I mean, shoot, the defense knew what they were going to want to do. Get the quarterback going, run the football, take a shot, get an explosive play through the air to your top receiver, and finish it off with a touchdown. Point after is up and good. So the Bulldogs are on the board. It is 22 to 22-7. Just getting underway here in the third quarter from williams Bryce Stadium. Well, Sunday afternoon because of Hurricane Ian, quarterback Anthony Richardson and Florida host Eastern Washington down in the swamp. Coverage begins at noon Eastern on SEC Network Plus and ESPN Plus. To watch the game, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. That'll be Sunday noon down in Gainesville and Anthony Richardson. You know, I, I know it was a tough loss last week. Yep. There's got to be some positives that he, oh. in, in particular, can walk out of there with. I, I think 100% big positive for him. I mean, a guy that was on, on cloud nine after that Utah win and then, you know, had some issues with turnovers himself, similar to Spencer Rattler, but I thought gained a lot of confidence in a very hostile stadium last week there in Knoxville. Nice return by Juju McDowell out over the 40-yard line. So South Carolina's offense comes on the field for the first time here in the second half. That's a great stat right there. You love to see a quarterback after an interception come back and perform. And, and I guess you could say after that first interception, it's not good that he had a second interception later on in that half. But once again, for those who missed the first half, go watch it, man. Both balls were where they need to be for the receivers. They got to make the play on it. Right side. Nice opening run from Marshawn Lloyd. Well, I just give him the football and say, go get him, buddy. I mean, he looks like another Marshawn that we know. Marshawn Lynch, former running back there in the NFL with the with the Seahawks. There's just there, there's a, a an extreme sense of urgency and 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 I would just say anger too. Like he just looks like he's angry when he runs the football, which you love to see. Like, you know, when he puts his foot in the ground, he means it. And, and just a lot of energy when he runs. It's fun to watch, and it's, I'm, I'm sure, intimidating to watch for a defense. First down and 10. Come near side, picked up off the ground by Jalen Brooks. Like that was going to be an incomplete pass. Basically almost the same result as he only gets about a half a yard. Second down coming up, but that was a low toss, but Brooks somehow maintained possession. Now, these are balls that Spencer's usually extremely accurate in and, and you know, made it hard. I think he made it look a little harder than it should have with that catch. They'll stack some receivers here to the near side on second down and nine. 
Rattler coming near side. Pass caught there by Juice Wells. Juice inside the 20, breaks a tackle to the 15, and he's into the 14-yard line as he's popped out of bounds after a 23-yard gain. And you're seeing a lot more, a lot more of this in pass offenses. You see a lot if you watch Tennessee. You know, you get stacked receivers to the boundary. One receiver wants a post. Another one is going to run a wheel route. And you know, anytime that wheel route feels like, hey, there's no ability for me to get on top, he's going to stop real quick. Boy, quick throw to the outside, and not much there for Juice Wells. Aaron Smith out there making a play for South Carolina State. This is this is the area of the field that you know, we saw we saw saw Bell have a rushing touchdown inside the three yard line, but you know bodies like this, like tight end bodies in the red zone, big bodies in short spaces, and they have them. Uh, you'd like to see them get a little bit more incorporated in this offense. Over the middle pass is caught, and it'll be a touchdown for South Carolina. Austin Stogner, way to go, good call. Big guys in the in the red zone, big targets condensed areas you need that that, that those those bodies and then they got them with Stogner and, and Bell use them more and that was a great job right there by Spencer stepping up in the pocket and this is a full field read working from right to left knowing that he has that dig route from his tight end and then accurate throw right on the body now you would love to see those guys get more and more involved in this offense going forward this season one after is up and good. Stockner had eight touchdown catches and 34 games played at Oklahoma, but that's his first touchdown grab as a South Carolina Gamecock. Young man had a great relationship with this head coach here in South Carolina, one of the reasons he appears here in Columbia. Spencer Rattler to stop. Touchdown, South Carolina. Back here in Columbia, if there's one thing that Shane Beamer prides himself on when it comes to being the head coach of the Gamecocks, it's the amount of fight that his team has. He got fired up about it, being asked questions about it a couple of weeks ago after that Georgia loss. Now, after that last South Carolina touchdown, he was fired up. Spencer Rattler was smiling ear to ear, and Shane Beamer went up to every member of that offense and said three words, way to respond. You can feel the confidence oozing out of that unit right now, guys. I would say he doesn't lack for energy. No. I just need some some TikTok help from him. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I need some pointers. <laughs> Trying to get my TikTok game up. Uh, hey, in this world of recruiting high school kids, you better be on top of your social media. Oh, I mean, look, it's like, you know, obviously he does a tremendous job. Pittman there at Arkansas, you had to defend himself the other day for, for his tweet about you know, being excited to be up you know, ranked where they were and fans got on him. He's like, man, I'm not tweeting for the fans. I'm tweeting for these recruits because yeah. they're on social media and they want to see that, hey, man, I'm, you know, I have a chance to go to a school that's ranked inside the top 10. And so, yeah, Beamer, the energy that he brings and the excitement, uh, it is, it's, it's, it's the Ted Lasso effect and it's, it's the truth, man. He's a, a fun person to be around and I'm sure a, a fun coach to be around as well. Tough loss, of course, last week against Texas A&M, and now their hands are full with Alabama this weekend. Handoff goes to, or excuse me, Tyrese Nick. Nick keeps it. So I'm looking at the stats. First six drives for South Carolina State. They went 83 yards in their first six drives of this game. Their last drive went 75 yards in eight plays. Whew. Oh, I think I think we, we we know the answer of who the quarterback is going to be here in the second half, and you know, the question now for for South Carolina because you're going to face you know other mobile quarterbacks this season. You know, how do you handle a guy that has the, the the threat and capability with his legs? Handoff to Flowers, and he is stopped behind the line. And lose a few yards on that one, a loss of three. I think that's what you have to do. I think right now the most dynamic player, and we were excited about Flowers coming back and getting healthy for this game, especially the way he played a couple weeks ago. But, you know, the way that Tyrese Nick is running right now, if, if there's any sort of zone read option, I'm allowing him to hand the ball to the running back. Right now, bottom of your screen, number one, Shaq Davis has been the go-to guy, any kind of man-to-man -man coverage. 
he's matched up against Cam Smith. James in the backfield. Tyrese Nick will try to find a little bit of seam, and that, that hole closed up in a hurry. He just got back to the original line of scrimmage. Zach Pickens making the play and letting people know about it. That's a great job defensively. Staying home, staying in your rush lanes. I mean, that's that's the one thing that is always preached. Anytime you face a quarterback that has the threat of running, make sure, make sure you stay in your rush lanes because as soon as you get out, trying to be Superman and make a play, that's when a mobile quarterback is going to take advantage. That's when you get the big explosive plays and third down conversion. So great discipline there from that Gamecock defense. Zach Pickens, according to his defensive coordinator, Clayton White, has been the most consistent guy on that defense. Well, almost. It is blocked. It is blocked. The ball will hit at the 41-yard line. And, oh, touched by South Carolina. And South Carolina State will have it. What a miscue by the Gamecocks. Josh Van came up to try to make the play, I believe, and it went right through his hands. Tyrone Hicks came up with that football. My man saw green grass and he saw the end zone. He said, I'm going to this thing no up. running into the kicker because the ball was tipped. The ball was touched by the receiving team then recovered by the kicking team. First down, South Carolina State. He was ready to scoop and score. First, we'll look at this blocked punt. Ball definitely tipped there. Great job laying out defensively. Just get enough of it. That hit, then, his, that hit his helmet? Yeah, I think it did. And then right there, I mean, I, I listen, I don't blame Van at all. I mean, you see the ball bouncing, and there's not a soul in sight in front of you leading up to the end zone. He's thinking, scoop. I'm taking it 40 yards for the touchdown. Just got to make sure you secure the ball first, young man. King, Dominion, Ford will get credit for that block. Now, South Carolina State will run it with Ja'Cory Benson. Takes a couple of Bulldog players and staff members down with him. Uh, I mean, it's, it's been the little things today, you know, for South Carolina. And, and, and at the end of the day, you may get away with it this game. And, and Lembo is not telling him just pick the ball up. But I... I, I you know, I think he, he did the right thing. Just make sure you secure it. But these little things are going to bite you in the butt going forward. R.J. Ryder trying to help his teammate out, saying, man, if he just scooped it up, he had a touchdown. Oh, yeah, easy touchdown. <laughs> Second down and eight. Little pitch. A good catch by Flowers. Has a little bit behind him, but still able to get some positive yardage out of it. Now, the one thing I have been impressed by, I mean, we, we've seen a couple penalties for, for South Carolina on the back end with some some PIs going against a, a taller receiver in Shaq Davis. But, you know, these safeties coming in and run support have been improved tonight so far in this game. And you've got to clean up the penalties, but at least, you know, those guys are willing to kind of get their, their, their helmet in there and make some plays defensively. Third down and six. Bulldogs are one of six on third down conversions. Well, once again, showing all-out blitz. Want to make sure that this isn't a four-down territory. Make sure they try to back him up a little bit. Going up top, a little miscommunication. And that one is picked off at the 27-yard line by South Carolina. Marcellus Dial with his second interception of the season. Uh, it's one-on-one -on -one blitzing. They end up dropping a few defenders back in coverage, but you know, just a miscommunication between the backup quarterback, Tyrese Nick, and Shaq Davis. He thinks he's going for a go route. Shaq runs a hitch. Interception from Dial. South Carolina gets the ball right back. It is a cool, brisk night with the wind howling through williams Bryce Stadium on this Thursday night. Spencer Rattler not letting the wind bother him at all as he hits Jaheim Bell deep down the field. And Bell will be tossed out of bounds at the 38-yard line. That'll be a gain of 33 yards. Look at South Carolina getting the tight ends involved in the game. You're going to get a scissors route off the play action. I actually had an opportunity for the deep post over top. He elects to throw the ball to the tight end. Beautiful sail route right there by Bell. Sells it with his eyes. 
and then breaks out of it high. And an accurate throw there from Spencer. He's done a great job with these plash and passes. That handoff goes to Christian Beal Smith, the Wake Forest transfer. You say sail route? Is that what you said? Yeah, it's a sail route. So that would be describe that route for me. So you think of a, a, your basic corner routes, more of a vertical stem, and you yeah. break it to the corner. A sail route is you're going to essentially sail like you're going to do a deep cross. So you're going to turn your body towards the middle of the field and then sail it back out okay. towards the sideline. So it comes in the similar area of a corner route, but just a different way to get to the same spot. Gotcha. Okay. Smarter today than I was yesterday. That's not saying much. <laughs> Spencer Rath <laughs> to the 22 yard line. Picks up six. Well, I think that this 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 play action game that we've seen, I mean we've seen a couple post routes thrown. We saw the your your new favorite route, the sail route yeah. just thrown. But everything's been off play action pass. And the reason they're gonna be able to do that is because of you know the film they're shown and the commitment that they're having to the run and you know that's that's it, it's good that's it's a different type of footwork and it's something that takes trust and a feel and right now Spencer it seems to to is starting to really excel in that that spot and I think it's gonna be a big part of this offense going forward second down and four they'll get it out to Juice Wells Juice trying to break a tackle can't do it he's right on the line to gain Jalen Barr now with 10 tackles brings down Juice Wells But what a career he had at James Madison. Single season records for receptions, yards, touchdowns. He is some kind of playmaker. Wide open in the flat. Oh, big collision. Christian Beal Smith. Man, you can hear that. I'm on the opposite side of the field up high. I heard that collision. It's because we have mics on the field. Oh, know, is that what hear? that was? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> Sound like it was right here. Because <laughs> it was. <laughs> uh, here's Rattler. Spencer dancing around, buying some time. And he'll throw it out of bounds. A lot of work for nothing. Oh, it looked good, though. Sounded good. <laughs> it sounded good. I wonder how you heard it <laughs> from about, you know, 120 yards away. <laughs> oh, man. It's our first game together. It could be our last. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's get the running back involved here. Third and one. All right, we're back in this formation. Look for Bell to get the football. He got it earlier. And he gets it here. Just a straight dive play, and he'll take the pile with him down to the six-yard line. Aaron Smith on that tackle, but not before. It'll be first and goal for South Carolina. Well, it's a fun formation. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's similar to a wing tee, and you just get a bunch of athletes back there, and, you know, just your traditional reverse fullback dive, get behind the Get behind your pads and see if you can get the first down. I was able to get a touchdown earlier in the game on that ex same exact play. And this is what we talked about with, with, with Bell, just finding creative ways to move him around this offense. Christian Beal Smith in the backfield. Rattler, though, rolling the pocket this way. Throws to the goal line. Pass is caught, but I think it was outside of the end zone by Juice Wells. So they'll spot it at the one. And that's what you talk about with a receiver using your hands. Strong hands there by Wells. We're going to confirm if he caught it. I'm pretty sure he caught, caught it. Looked clean to me. You know, once again, definitely not in the end zone. And touchdown for South Carolina. That didn't take long. They got to the line of scrimmage and just powered it in behind Christian Beal Smith. That'll be his second touchdown. Now, this is exactly what you envision for a South Carolina fan heading into this game. Turnovers on defense turn into offensive touchdowns. You get the interception. You get some explosive plays in the air. And then, once again, this running game doing its thing like it has been for the past two weeks. So after.
after South Carolina State scores on their first possession of the third quarter. The Gamecocks have answered back with two touchdowns of their own. That point after is up and good. It's now 36 to seven with 52 seconds to go here in the third quarter. We'll be back with more action in 10 seconds. Well, not a big crowd is certainly a lot of things going on around the state of South Carolina. Folks usually from that coastal area down in the low country might make it to trip up, but with everything going on, they are probably just uh, preparing for Mother Nature to come their way, which will eventually get here. To what extent, still not known, but it's supposed to rain all day starting about five in the morning. Yeah. With some serious wind, so kudos for these two programs are making this one happen on such short notice. This time a fair catch called for by Rakeem White. He learned his lesson before halftime. <laughs> yes, he did. Just, just, just fair catch and move on. <laughs> Well, here's a look at Saturday's Week 5 SEC Network College football lineup, and there will be no noon game on Saturday because it's going on right now before your eyes. 17th-ranked Texas A&M will take on Mississippi State at 4 o'clock Eastern. Then at 7.30 Eastern, the Missouri Tigers will be hosting the number one-ranked Georgia Bulldogs on our SEC Saturday night matchup. Both games available on the ESPN app. Boy, Missouri's got to be feeling the pain of last weekend in Auburn, a game that they just... <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how to describe the, that loss. It just felt like both teams were trying to find a way to lose the game there in the yeah. end of it. And tough, tough loss for Eli. Here is Nick trying to turn the corner, and he'll lose three or four. But I think a lot of eyes will be on the early game on ESPN. Kentucky and Ole Miss, number seven, number 14. I had a chance to see Ole Miss last weekend. Didn't look great against Tulsa. Yeah. But I've got to tell you something. Uh, this kid Judkins at running back. Ooh. Oh, man. Well, speaking of running backs, Rodriguez will be back for Kentucky this weekend. And, and one of the premier running backs in the SEC going to have some fresh legs. And, you know, watching that Ole Miss tape, man, they, they could not stop the run. Yeah. And I know Kentucky struggled this season to run the football. But you get Rodriguez back, that's going to be a, a huge boost to that game. If they can run the football like Tulsa did, that's big trouble for Ole Miss. Keeper from Corey Fields, who's back in the game, and he got nothing out of that one. That's the end of the third quarter. And that'll be it for the third quarter. Just 15 more minutes of action from williams Bryce Stadium. South Carolina wearing those helmets. They go back to 1968 on this Thursday night at williams Bryce Stadium. We'll come back right here on the SEC Network. South Carolina in control. We start the fourth quarter with South Carolina up 36 to seven. South Carolina State looking at a third down and 12. Fields over the middle, that one should have been picked off. Instead, it falls to the turf. Went right through the hands of a defender. Boy, Martin Scott had a chance to pick that one off. And He'll be looking at that. Look at him. He just, he knows it. That was so easy, he says. Oh, he just knows in film that the offensive guys are going to go to him and say, man, that's why you play defense. You know, right there. You cannot have asked for an easier pick over the middle of the field. These quarterbacks are struggling for South Carolina State to be able to anticipate open windows and just blindly trying to throw the ball in there. And once again, South Carolina making a play, not able to finish it, but able to get off the field. South Carolina comes up. A Marion Brown came up and tried to scoop that one up and well looked dangerous as well. Debo Williams gets that block. Well, that could have been trouble again on both sides. 
Gamecocks will have it. Oh, it looked like that. Did that hit off a South Carolina player? It may have, yeah. My goodness, this is crazy. Thirty-six seven, South Carolina out in front. Boy, that punt. Boy, there was a lot going on, on that last play. Besides the block, it hit a Gamecock player and then fell right into the hands and a heads-up play by Amari and Brown. Well, there's the block, and then it hit Bam Martin Scott in the back of the helmet. And Brown was about the only guy on the field that saw it, and he fell on the football. So a heads-up play, and Gamecocks trying to break one free here as Marshawn Lloyd takes a little pass and he'll pick up nine. Luke Doty, by the way, in the game at quarterback. First time we've had a chance to see Luke. Doty on the year has completed now eight of 12 passes for 149 yards. Hands it off here to Lloyd. Lloyd has nowhere to go. He gets met right there at the line of scrimmage by Jamal McKinley and dropped. He'll lose a couple of yards. I'm surprised Lloyd's in the game. You know, you, you, this is... Yeah, he, he is, he's your workhorse, man, and he's going to get plenty of touches this season. And I think he has plenty of confidence after the past two weeks have gone that, you know, get him, get him on the bench and let him get rested up before that big game next weekend. And I'm sure he'll have a few more carries here. Maybe this is the last possession for most of these starters. So good game overall for, for Spencer. You know, I know a lot of people, if you look at the stat line tomorrow, they're like, oh, he threw two picks. Well, not his fault. I'll tell you that. And there were big gainers, probably about 65 yards in those two passes that should have been caught that turned into interceptions. Oh, Lloyd dropped the football. It's on the turf, and it is a mad scramble. Boy, South Carolina State had it. Looks like South Carolina may be in possession of that football, and they are. Lloyd's tapping his chest really and says, ball was recovered by South Carolina. First down. Well, that's always the thing that, that does worry me with, with running backs that run with such passion as he does is, is you're always thinking that there's ability to continue to make plays and you know, in traffic like that, just got to make sure you put two hands on it. But, you know, I think that was more of just a good defensive play, being able to get a finger on that football and, 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 and jar it loose a little bit. First down and 10. Doty drops it off underneath. Boy, didn't give Lloyd much of a chance to do anything with that one. As he'll be dropped for a loss. B.J. Davis making that tackle. That is five stops now for B.J. Leads his team in tackles. Had a couple of interceptions in their last game against Bethune-Cookman as well. Let's go down to Alyssa. Hey, guys, you remember last year, Luke Doty was part of that 200 quarterback rotation yes. that South Carolina was dealing with on offense. And when we were talking to Coach Satterfield ahead of this game, I asked him, you know, what does the role look like for Luke? He's a fan favorite. He's a player favorite. Always got a smile on his face, a ton of confidence. He said they're excited for him to finally be able to sit back and learn behind a veteran quarterback, a guy who's had a couple of years under his belt when it comes to college football, of course, talking about Spencer Rattler. And we've learned over the last few seasons, guys, how important it is to have a solid backup. So they're really excited about the position Doty's in now. Well, Doty's coming here after a great high school career where he was Mr. Football in this state. Broke his foot, really slowed him down a year ago, but finally healthy and Good to see him getting some work here in the fourth quarter. A lot of time, so he has a chance to put together a nice little tape. Although right now he needs some help up front. There's not been a whole lot of room to run. Juju McDowell this time brought down by McKinley. Well, you're seeing an aggressive defense right now. They, they, they see backup quarterback in. Their, their mindset goes to, okay, they're going to run the football, quick passes. You're seeing you know, seven guys in the box or heavy quarters defense where, where safeties are – Heavy and run support. Yeah, Jablonski Green, perhaps their most talented defensive player. Had 19 and a half tackles for loss a year ago. Doty again dumps it off underneath. Flag comes out. B.J. Davis making the play on Juju McDowell, but the best play on this drive was the fumble. Offense number 52, 
The penalty is declined. The result of the play is the first down for South Carolina State. So Jalen Nichols caught in violation of the rules. So there will be a timeout on the field. Bulldogs defense stands tall. They give their offense the football. 10.51 to go. Back in a moment. Check out our Mayhem Moment brought to you by Allstate. A little two-point conversion early in the game. And keep an eye on 91, Tonka Hemingway. Yes, sir. Big man, two-point conversion. I love the play by Pete Limbo. And there's nothing wrong anytime you see a big man raising the ball up in the end zone. I love that. I just—I was hoping for a big man spike, though. After yeah. <laughs> just spike that thing in there. And he wants to play next week. You know, let's uh, yeah. <laughs> rules, the rules. <laughs> Uh, there's old Coach Limbo, head of special teams. Fields will throw, and it's picked off. Another interception. This time, Bam Martin Scott holds on to it. And he's still going. Still on his feet inside the 10, down to the two-yard line. What a return. Bam Martin Scott was not going to be denied after dropping one earlier. I'm telling you, man, he went to the sidelines, and the offense was giving him crap, saying that's why you play defense. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he comes out the next possession and makes sure that he secures the pick. You never, never double clutch routes like that. Just way too many bodies. You just got to take it and run. And good for South Carolina taking advantage. And my man's looking. He looks like his running back, Lloyd, there. You don't think he's going to talk to his running backs, do you, after that run? I mean, look at that. Move, swim, uh, ball security, ball security. He needs to thank his, you know, one of his teammates for keeping him in bounds there. But we just got to work on the ball security. But that, that was that was nice, very nice. That was super solid. Here goes Lloyd trying to power his way into the end zone, and he does. A two-yard scamper by Marshawn Lloyd has a receiving touchdown and now a rushing touchdown, and a second game with a rushing and receiving TD. Did it against Georgia State. Well, he is going to be the one that makes this offense go this season. There's no doubt about it. It's been fun to watch these past couple weeks. Really starting to get his rhythm right now, which is, for South Carolina fans, the perfect time to get going. So 43 to 7 now, South Carolina out in front. Man, Martin Scott. Well, every Saturday, Marty McGee and SEC Nation bring you extensive SEC game previews with the latest news from around the conference that you won't find anywhere else. This week, the guys will be in Oxford at 9 a.m. Eastern, followed by an SEC Nation that takes you right up to kickoff between 7th-ranked Kentucky, 14th-ranked Ole Miss. Both are right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Of course, the football game over on ESPN. and should be a lot of fun. And, boy, the run game of this Ole Miss team has been Ooh. very impressive between, impressive between Quinshawn Jetkins and Zach Evans. Look at the numbers that those guys have posted this year. It's – and, and – and. I mean, this is maybe one of the most complete offenses in the SEC. They got these two who may be the best duo of running backs in this conference. I think a very impressive offensive line, a quarterback in Jackson Dart. Hey, throw him in the run, run game too now. Yeah, he's brought that can run as yeah. well. I mean, he's been Matt Corral-esque in, in, in that department with the RPOs and, and taking it when the zone read. And you got Trey get tight end. You got some really talented, some receivers as well. It's going to be a fun offense. But you know, I want to see him do it against a good team. Yeah. And, and we're going to get a lot of questions answered about who Ole Miss is this weekend. And I think we're also going to give a little idea of, you know, who is the third team in the league this yep. year. we got Georgia, Alabama, and then you've got that group, you know, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ole Miss, maybe Arkansas took a shot. I think Mississippi State's still on it, too. Yeah, we'll I, see. I think big weekend for them against yep. Texas A&M. I do. I mean, look look at the way LSU's played, though, too. I know. It, it, they're under the radar after what they happened are. in week one. They are. But I think that they're making some really positive strides here. 
and might be able to take down a few teams that uh, you didn't think that they would games that they would win or be able to win. I they have, they've way too much talent on that roster not to be good with that new coaching staff they have with with Brian Kelly and you know going back to that that the AP poll you know to see Tennessee in there. I think you know I had a game I had their game a couple weeks ago and the energy in Knoxville is is absolutely tremendous right now and, and you saw it last week with game day there and you know their game versus Florida and that big victory and kind of get that monkey off their back in that rivalry you know Hennon Hooker and those receivers and Hyatt emerging as a, as a top guy too I just don't know how you slow him down honestly uh, Hennon's playing at, a, at, at, at I would say a Heisman level here to start the season off the other game I'm anxious to see is how Arkansas responds. I know they got Alabama in front of them, but they'll be at home. Here goes Nick. He'll get out of bounds. But, you know, Alabama's 15-0 and against Arkansas since Nick Saban arrived in Tuscaloosa back in 2007. That's tied for their third longest winning streak against an SEC opponent in program history. Um, but Arkansas with... I also feel like Nick's record against a lot of teams in the West is very similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Arkansas can keep it close. I think KJ is going to have to have a game, and I think he's capable of having a game yeah. like that. Boy, big hole off the left side. Tyler Smith getting a carry. He'll have a first down across midfield. All right now, I, I think Shane Beamer and this coaching staff and Clayton White are, are, are extremely pleased with how this defense has performed in this game. Obviously, you know, getting some takeovers, a couple penalties in that first half on some PIs that you want to clean up, obviously, but overall making tackles, finishing plays. Now now it's 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 can we build the mentality of finishing a football game? Okay, you got this thing secured right now, but can we keep them out of the end zone? Nick will throw. And that is a nice catch. They're gonna say it is a reception down at around the 25-yard line by Shaq Davis. My goodness, what a nice throw and a catch. Well, a heck of a catch. It was a back shoulder, a little bit too too flat of a throw from the quarterback. You want to put that ball in a little bit more air to allow your receiver to adjust. But, I mean, this kid, you, you watch it on film, and you really don't know because the quarterbacks really haven't given him enough opportunities. But watching him live win some of these one-on-one -on -one battles on the outside, you see why there's people saying this kid has a chance at that next level. Boy, if I'm South Carolina State, I'm getting up to the football yeah. and I'm playing. I mean, I, so many teams on these questionable calls. William, a catch for a first down is under video review. You got a chance for a big gainer into South Carolina territory. And, and then you're getting, you, what you've been doing is just running the football. I mean, you should have just a code word at that yeah. point and say, hey, zone read, zone read, whatever that play is, you get up, you run it, you snap it, you go. And. And, and hope not even get yeah and, right and even if you get one or two yards who cares you you you, know, you may lose 40 yards right now yeah our first look at it makes me think it was a catch really the catch for a first down is confirmed first down South Carolina State. there you go see how quick that was it should be that quick right. I like I mean, it someone should be looking at it All right, so we'll step aside. Timeout on the field. South Carolina State driving back in a moment. Fall vibes made easy. That's totally Target. First down and 10 after the reception by Shaq Davis. Lofting it up, trying to go to Davis again, and that one is out of play, but flags come in. 
That'll be pass interference. Shaq Davis, just to give you an idea, six feet five. He runs a sub four five forty. He's played a couple of years on the South Carolina State basketball team. Hadn't played a whole lot, but still a member of Pass that team. Interference defense number 33. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot includes an automatic first down. And you know, his coach says he's a basketball guy, guy that's turned into a football player yep. the last couple of years and said it really wasn't. He even said it that it really wasn't until his junior year of high school that he felt like, yeah, maybe I could be okay at this game. I mean, you love those basketball guys because they, they the body awareness and then be able to, to control their body to go up and make plays is, is just at a different level because of the sport that they're more comfortable with. And obviously he has the frame and, and, and probably could put on another 10 to 15 pounds as well. Nick scrambling around, trying to make something happen. Oh, is he walloped? He made something happen all right. Man, I could hear that from up here. It's crazy how that could happen. <laughs> See, it does. You can. I mean, it's louder. Uh, through the glass. Oh, right. 100 yards away. <laughs> Just listen to this for a minute. Ooh, that was... <laughs> Even with the microphone down there, that was definitely a loud collision. Come on now. He's smooth too, though. I know, you know, throwing the ball may be something uh, that they, they, they continue to work on with him if he is going to be the guy going forward. And you know, I think South Carolina State's going to have to make a decision. You know, they've you know, they've had some issues with, with Corey Fields and, and accuracy and turnovers. And, you know, what Tyrese has shown us tonight is the ability to run the football. South Carolina State chance. is called timeout. All right, we'll step aside as well. Bulldogs knocking on the door. 7.07 to play. Well, don't forget, Sunday afternoon. That is Sunday afternoon at noon Eastern time. Eastern Washington and Florida will go at it. Hurricane Ian, of course, had an impact on the scheduling of that game. Coverage begins at noon Eastern right here on S actually on SEC Network Plus and ESPN Plus. To watch that game, go to ESPNPlus.com or download the ESPN app. Of course, we move this one from Saturday to Thursday because of the hurricane as well. South Carolina State trying to put some more points on the board. Boy, Nick running all over the place. Throws to the back of the end zone, and that one is incomplete. Boy, he is hard to track down. He is he's a fun athlete to watch, uh, that's for sure. And, and I think he's you know gained some confidence from this game tonight as he runs off the field and Corey Fields comes back in there. <laughs> Buddy Pew. I mean, how is it? Uh, how do you not like this guy? Oh, he's, he was, he was just so much fun to talk to. This that was my first time interacting with him, and you know the entire coaching staff. But but him just getting to know him a little bit, and just his energy and excitement. Corey Fields throws, and that one should have been caught. That should have been a touchdown for South Carolina State. That may have hit Shaq Davis on the. Boy, that may have caught him awkwardly on that hand. Well, we already saw Justin Smith-Brown go out of this game for South Carolina State after a ball whistled off his thumb. Oh, Ooh. you know, oh, that's just... Yeah, just closed his hands a little bit too soon and... Hopefully just a little... Pulling good to go. A beautiful throw by Corey Fields. You know, throw it up to the big guy, let him go make a play in the red zone. Here's Gavin Zimmerman, who has hit all 11 of his field goal attempts in his career. Timeout taken by South Carolina State. South Carolina State has called timeout. It'll be 30 seconds in length. It's their second timeout of the half. Let's go down to Alyssa. Well, guys, tonight I wanted to peel the curtain back on something that people around here follow very closely, and that's recruiting. It's all year round. It's really important. And that's why SEC schools have entire directors and recruiting uh, departments to make sure that they're taking care of these guys on field visits, on campus visits, official visits from high school and beyond. Now here at South Carolina, Jessica Jackson is the director of on-campus recruiting here in Columbia. She's somebody 
who got here towards the beginning of Will Muschamp's tenure. I asked Shane Beamer about her. He said she was someone I'd never met, but heard amazing things about her from everyone I came in contact with. When I got the job, he said it was a no-brainer to keep her. I talked with Jessica today. She told me about her journey here to Columbia, becoming the director of on-campus recruiting. Essentially, she was working for the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, a job that Kirby Smart had gotten her several years ago. When South Carolina reached out saying, hey, we're trying to build an entire department to make sure we're on the top of our game when it comes to recruiting. So she said, no brainer. I wanted to be part of a university. I missed having a team to cheer for. So she comes to Columbia and now she is in charge of everything. She is truly moving everything important behind the scenes in charge of all of those official visits. I did ask her, you know, for those of us who don't get to be in the room during those official visits, during those conversations with families, said, what's the most important thing to you? She said, I never want a parent to feel like they're giving their child away and no one's watching over them. So she kind of taken on the identity of the cool aunt for some of these guys. He said, she said, guys will sit in my office and talk to me about life stuff. I make sure they're comfortable outside of the football side of things, making sure they always have someone in their corner. She's so close with not only these players, but their families. She has great relationships with them. And given this program and what we know about Shane Beamer, his importance and emphasis on family here in Columbia, she was a perfect fit and she's making things go behind the scenes here. It is incredible what goes on in terms of recruiting. It's certainly great training being the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. That is one of the premier bowls in all of America, probably one of the most well-run bowls. And coming here to South Carolina, I'm just curious, you're, you're around the game now, but I, what, was, what year did you graduate high school? 2009. Okay, so I'm just curious, when you see today's kids being recruited versus what you went through, what's the biggest difference? They're bigger. You know, I, was at a, I was speaking at a touchdown club the other night in Savannah, and there was a, a sophomore defensive tackle that was 6'6", 280. They already have, you know, scholarships. Right. got a scholarship when he was in eighth grade. And I'm like, man, like you are, you look like you should be starting in an SEC school. You're only a sophomore in high school. I mean, these, it is amazing, these kids. But I, I just, you know, obviously seven-on-seven seven stuff was going on when you were oh, yeah. playing. But it seems like the, the whole, it, it's 24-7 now. If you are committed to much, much. Right. It's too much, though. You know, I, I still, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that you know, if you are a well-rounded athlete, so you play football, you play basketball and baseball and lacrosse, or whatever it is, like, it's going to help you. Like, the best athletes I've ever been around in my life are guys that played everything, not just were specific in one sport. I know it's hard because a lot of this is year-round nowadays with the seven-on-sevens, but the more you can expose your body to different sports i think the better it is when you get to college and you know hopefully to that next level that handoff goes to christian beale smith but no they're, they're they are more prepared especially quarterbacks i would say you know these quarterbacks nowadays they they, they show up and they know you know they know the coverages they know the blitzes they know what concepts work against you know these coverages as well which is just it, so advanced why you see so many of them have success as you know freshmen and sophomores that concept didn't work very well Jamal McKinley with another stop for South Carolina State I think that's the biggest thing I, you know I, I have some you know I have a, a youngster it's a junior in high school and, and uh, he, while he's a baseball player but he hangs out with these football players and you hear all summer they're going to this camp this camp this camp this camp this camp I mean it is non-stop for these guys well, listen, baseball is not much different, though. <laughs> you know it in that, like, the amount of tournaments and, you know, fall ball and spring ball and summer ball. Uh, yeah, football's gotten to that point now. You know, football's gone from not only a fall sport, but then you have spring practice and then the, the camps and seven on sevens in the, in the, in the, in the summertime, too. Fair catch called for. So Bailey makes the catch, and South Carolina State will have it 440 to go in this one well let's take a look at today's capital one rewarding performance and for that spencer rattler and his number's pretty good today 21 to 27 easily could have been 23 of 27 for about 270 yards yeah you you take away two interceptions that you know obviously are two interceptions on the stat sheet but also i would say what around like 60 more yards yeah. of completions i thought he's he's these past two weeks and and 
you know, granted, you have to look at the competition, but I don't really care about that. I care about a guy that, you know, right now when you watch him, his eyes and feet are in the right spot. Something that they did not look like they were in the first couple games of the season. He's picking up the offense. He's getting more comfortable in it. And he's also trusting his receivers down the field. A 38 of 50 over his last two games throwing the football is a percentage every coach in America will take. Yeah, and then, you know, we talked about it during the, the middle of the broadcast. You know, last week was a lot of the dinks and dunks, a lot of those those swing passes and quick screens to the outside to the receivers. And you know, we, we had some of those today, obviously. But also, you know, we saw the sail route. We saw a couple post routes and go balls and, you know, a deep dig route to his tight end for a touchdown. So, once again, the, the, the full playbook is coming. And he, he's, he's getting there, and, and, and I talked about it earlier, it's, it's a lot different than what he learned before. Ball is put on the turf by Fields. He will pick it up and be hit immediately. The other thing about Spencer Rattler, those two games against Georgia and Arkansas that certainly were, especially the Georgia game, his performance where Shane Beamer even admitted he just really felt like his team was, was out of it. But Arkansas really put up a good yep. fight, especially in the second half. But Spencer steps up to the podium, answers all the questions, handles those defeats, all the questions about his performance, good or bad. Um, he is willing to, to take the shots when needed. False start, offense number 68. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Well, I tell you what, in, in, in the world these kids live in, which I would, 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 would hate to because being a quarterback in, in the SEC is already hard enough, but... You have to have thick skin, and, and you got to be able to learn how to deal with the criticism, you know, whether it's on the social media or media or fans and students on, on campus, whatever it is. Like, you just got to got to trust the process, and that's what the coaches tell us, man. He trusts the process, and we tell him something, he's going to take it to heart, and he's going to be there that next day working his tail off to figure it out. That pass is incomplete. Well shy of the first down, which was out around the 30. So, South Carolina State will punt this one away with 2.56 to go. South Carolina State certainly will leave here with a bruise or two, but there are some things they can build on as they get Moving along, they got Florida A&M coming up next, a big rival for them, the Battle of the Bands, Marching 101 against the Marching 100. That'll be a show in itself. Scooped up there by Van, and he's trying to turn the corner. He's got some blockers out in front. Here is Van to the 35-yard line, and they will spot him at the 33 with 2.39 to go. Well, obviously, with so much going on with Mother Nature, especially down in South Florida, moving up the coast, North Florida, you can help the people affected by Hurricane Ian. You can donate at redcross.org slash ESPN. That's redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross prepare for, respond to, and help people recover from this just awful disaster. The photos coming out of the Fort Myers area and the video, just unbelievable to see the transformation in 24 hours. Boy, big run by Juju. Or excuse me, Dante Miller on that carry. 25 instead of 22. Dante, the graduate, transferred in from Columbia. University. Well, just a lot of action going on there in the backfield. You got jet sweep motion. You got guys pulling right and left, and all of a sudden Miller pops out of the left side of the offensive line. You know, it's a, it's a position that they are excited about that running back spot. They feel like they're three or four deep, as we know injuries happen, and you got to be able to rely on those guys. They'll give it again to Dante Miller. Takes it into the end zone. Dante Miller. Wasn't going to be denied. He had his opportunity tonight and took full advantage of it. Nine yard touchdown run. Oh, you see all the running backs coming down there to, to, to celebrate with him. Holding offense, number 52. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Oh, I did not see the flag. 
was covered up. There's an injured South Carolina lineman down the middle of the field. Looks like Trey Jones, 72, is the one that's being attended to right now. So take the touchdown off the board. That was a uh, – not that I'm into those things, but that would have been a big touchdown for a lot of people. Oh, would it have been? Yeah. Mm. Thursday night football. Always something on the line. Always something on the line. <laughs> Let's hope Trey's okay. Big man, 6'2", 308. Out of Abbeville High School here in South Carolina. So now the ball will be spotted at the 12-yard line. South Carolina has rushed for 172 yards today, a little bit shy of what they went for, 295 last weekend. This time, Doty keeps it himself to the 10, to the 5, touchdown! South Carolina, Luke Doty. 13-yard scamper. Well, Miller's been running the ball so well those first two plays. I know the touchdown got called back. So, you know, what do you do? You come with a little bit of a zone read. And, you know, we said it earlier in the broadcast, if you're going to do zone read against this defense, they are going to eliminate the running back and force the quarterback to pull it and run. And Doty's showing off them wheels. Getting the late touchdown. So, Alex Herrera to attempt the point after. a big point after. Celebrate the good times here. That's yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, some, some. Some people win, some people lose. That's why we play the game. But that was a rather large extra point in a lot of ways. And I would thank goodness for that two-point conversion to start the game. <laughs> no joke. Uh, well, how about five different players with a rush touchdown? They rushed for six touchdowns last Saturday. I'm not sure what to make of South Carolina right now. Yeah. Like there are moments where you go, okay, they look like they can hang around. There are moments yeah. like where they just kind of they flounder a little bit. Yeah. No, they do and, 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 and that was the thing today tonight too. It's 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 slow starts, it's it's mistakes, it's penalties. But when they're not hurting themselves, you see what Coach Beamer is excited about and what other people in this community are excited about. Like, it's a good football team with really good talent. Like, you got a premier back. You got some talent on the outside. You got a great, a great room of tight ends. Uh, and I think you have a quarterback with a lot of talent that I think has played extremely well these past two weeks and needs to continue to take care of the football. You know, this should be two games in a row without an interception, if we're going to be honest with us. Yeah. This should be two back-to-back -back weeks. And I think that's how he's going to view it. You know, that's that's the, these are two building games for him that that hopefully should give him a lot of confidence as they get ready for really the meat of their schedule. Fair catch called for at the goal line. So for South Carolina, Marshawn Lloyd rushes 11 times for 80 yards, averages seven yards per carry. Last week, averaged 11 yards per carry. Spencer Rattler second on the team in rushing, five for 31. He also was 21 of 27 throwing the football. 404 yards of offense for the Gamecocks, just 211 for South Carolina State. Off goes to Shaw. He is wrapped up and thrown for a loss. So up next for South Carolina, they'll travel to Kentucky. Then they get Texas A&M and Missouri after a week off right here at williams Bryce Stadium. And they finish Vanderbilt, Florida, Tennessee at Clemson. So six straight conference games and then Clemson to wrap up things. 
Well, Alyssa brought it up. It's you know you, you you hate the hurricane coming through, but you know if you if you want to look at some benefit, it is being able to play this game on a Thursday. Knock on wood here in the next you know minute. Nothing crazy happens injury wise. You, you're healthy. You get a couple extra days to rest. You get a couple more days to to prepare, and and hopefully have a big statement game the following weekend versus Kentucky. You, know, you get to sit back this Saturday and and watch football, watch them live, get a feel for what they're doing. And like I said, once again, get ahead on the game plan, which every day counts getting ready for SEC play. Look, South Carolina did what they needed to do. They put yep. 50 on the board. They put 56 on the board last week against teams that you would think that they would put those kind of numbers up. 50 to 10 is not something that, you know, but to be disappointed about. The end result is probably what maybe internally you and I saw coming. Maybe yep. coaches, staffs, they always think things aren't going to work out that way. They don't miss, they're all so negative about stuff, talking to you about the game. They don't want to look too far in advance. But hey, they did what they did. South Carolina State just travels 45 miles, comes down here. And look, they had some moments, too. And they will get ready to take on FAMU. There is Buddy Pugh talking to Shane Beamer. Good luck to the Bulldogs the rest of the way out. Shane Beamer will pick up. His third win of the season, three and two now for the Gamecocks as they win this one by 40. Of course, Buddy Pugh on the staff here at South Carolina under Brad Scott for a couple of years and then transitioned to the Lou Holtz staff for three years. Hoping his team could turn the corner like they did a year ago after starting one and four. They would go five and zero oh in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference and win the Celebration Bowl. He is hopeful those same kind of plans will hold true in 2022. So a lot of friendships on the field right now, a lot of hugs, handshakes. These two clubs will go their separate ways. But you're right. I mean, I think you start thinking about this. I mean, yep. now South Carolina advantage Gamecocks in terms of yep. getting ready for next weekend. While Kentucky has their certainly their hands full with a real battle. Oh, it's on gonna be a, it's gonna be a heck of a battle versus Ole Miss. I think one of the better games this weekend in all of college football. So you know they're gonna be focused on that. And regardless, win or lose, the amount of energy it's gonna take to win on the road there in Oxford compared to these guys kind of just ready to go. All right, let's go down to Alyssa. Coach, I heard you preaching, responding to your team on the sidelines. How do they respond to some adversity tonight and to this short week? I was proud of them. You know, they handled the week well. Uh, not normal, obviously, and quick turnaround. And didn't always play pretty tonight, but uh, responded at the right time tonight. We got to get the penalties on defense cleaned up and some of the turnovers on offense cleaned up. But, you know, for the most part, I was um, really, really proud of them. So. You mentioned that defensive performance at halftime. What will be the emphasis ahead of next week? You know, just the um, – a lot. You know, obviously we're playing a great team up in Lexington next week, and they're explosive on offense. Uh, we got to be better. But, you know, the thing for us is just continue to get better each week. We've, we've got talented guys on defense. We're playing a lot of true freshmen right now. We just need them to continue to hurry up and, and grow up. It looked like Spencer was grinning ear to ear in the second half tonight. What do you make of some of the confidence that he gained this evening? Yeah, I think he's just having fun, you know, and he's got playmakers around him and he's 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 getting more and more comfortable around this team. And and uh, I, my children are the worst at like trying. To we can on. let Hunter photobomb if he wants. He was trying earlier. You want to you do your dance? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. How can I get out of here? Um, he's just getting more and more comfortable, and, and uh, you know his teammates uh, love him and respect him, and and uh, you know happy for him to get up here tonight and and have some success and running the ball and throwing it. First Thursday night dub, coach. Congrats. Yeah, I appreciate it. Need to keep them coming. We had some great Thursday nights here when I was here before, uh, some epic ones. So I'm all for it if we want to keep doing it. Love it. Thanks, coach. Yeah. Thanks, Alyssa. All right. So South Carolina goes to three and two on the year. Meanwhile, South Carolina State will drop to one and three. Gamecocks pick up the win, 50 to 10. Over there. Friends from Orangeburg, just 45 miles away. 
So for Aaron Murray, Alyssa Lang, and the rest of our SEC Network crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long from Columbia, South Carolina, where the Gamecocks will enjoy the evening with the 40-point win. Good night, everybody.